Hello Romantic family, welcome back to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home and in today's video I am so excited to share with you guys 60 DIY Dollar Tree Spring and Easter Decor Crafts. So this is another episode in my I Love Spring series. I'm also hosting a Cricut Joy giveaway. All you guys have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment down below. Hey listen, this is going to be a binge worthy crafting video. So you guys are going to get so inspired to craft and decorate on a total budget which I totally believe in and also remember that you guys can change my ideas up just a little bit with a different paint color or ribbon color and that will suit your decor style so turn on those imaginations and let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns get out your glitter and paint and let's With get to crafting dollar tree diys we are going to create this tablescape on a teeny tiny budget using items from the dollar tree for the first dollar tree diy you're going to take one of those napkin rings they come six to a pack at dollar tree and they're silver and you're going to take one of those dollar tree carrots and just hot glue it to the front of the napkin ring add a big dab of hot glue and then just hold it on for a couple of seconds and voila you have a beautiful customized napkin ring the carrots do come forward to a pack so if you wanted to do six of those you'll need to pick up two packs now I'm just going to take my napkin and I'm going to fold it into a triangle these are some linen napkins that my daughter and I found at the thrift store for 15 cents each such a bargain you're going to pull it through the nap pull the napkin ring with the napkin through it and then add it to your beautiful tablescape now I used a silver Dollar Tree charger a white dinner plate and then a square white dinner plate For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a beautiful blooming floral. Now I have this big long uh, planter box that I found at the thrift store for $3, but if you don't have a planter box, you can take several Dollar Tree gift boxes. I had painted these gold and then added these white frames to the front. I also found those at Dollar Tree and I do have a link to the tutorial down below. I'm going to use two bundles of hyacinths two bundles of hydrangeas. These are both in kind of the white cream color, three bundles of ferns, and all of my florals I found at the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has some really beautiful florals if you choose the right color combination. I'm also using three bundles of lilacs, one of these amaranthus, and this is kind of the pinkish whitish color. And then I'm also going to use two little bundles here of the wisteria that was also in the white cream color i'm using two bags of floral moss to complete this i also took one of those dollar tree candlesticks and a white plate and e6000 that to the top i made two of those stands and i'm using two of the target dollar spot bunnies i'm also going in with my mrs myers wood cleaner to clean out this box really well now i'm taking those little um, cake candle stands and i'm going to put them in the center of this arrangement because I want to create height for my bunnies to be kind of nestled down into the arrangement. For this arrangement, I'm also gluing in some styrofoam blocks. I used three styrofoam blocks and I just cut them in half. And now I'm adding the wisteria to the center part. Now this is the tallest part of the arrangement, so I added both of these to the center. And then I'm adding in some of those Dollar Tree ferns. This I'm just adding in a bundle, but you can also piece them apart if you like. Now I'm adding in some of the taller white hyacinths, and those are kind of going to come out and be poked to the side just a little bit. So I cut two off of this stem, and now I'm leaving three on the stem and having them come up larger in the back of the fern. Now I'm adding in some lilacs. So really what I want this to look like is a really beautiful blooming garden that these bunnies are playing in. So just continue to add in some lilacs and you can piece these apart with some wire cutters fairly easily. And now I'm adding in my beautiful pink trailing flower. I love these. I think these are very high end for Dollar Tree. Great job this year. I'm also filling it out with some beautiful hydrangeas. I'm piecing apart a fern to kind of make that loop out and over. And then don't forget about the back of your arrangement. So you're going to come into the back with some ferns and also some of those beautiful white hydrangeas. The hydrangeas are really nice because they're a fuller 
flower so they'll fill out your arrangement very nicely it's going to give texture and dimension to this arrangement as well so we're creating even more visual interest by coming in and along the back and in and around the front so this doesn't have to be perfect you guys play with this make it feel like this is a spring garden blooming and if you look at my garden, I always like to plant kind of an English garden where it's a little bit wild and a little bit colorful and just kind of fun. I hope that makes sense. So I'm coming in with some more of the taller flowers and then also poking in a little bit of those ferns. Again, continue to play with your arrangement. Once I have my arrangement where I want it, I want to go in with some of that uh, moss. So you all can use the green Dollar Tree moss, you could use Excelsior grass. My Dollar Tree had some of the brown moss on hand, so that's what I'm using. I think it looks really nice and very springtime garden friendly. I'm also adding some moss to the top where I have those cute little bunnies, and I think this is coming out so gorgeous, so perfect. It looks like something you could almost use too for a bridal table. I did try to keep some of the arrangement a little bit low, but it did get very high who knows I may decide to move it but I think it's really beautiful and honestly it made me want to have just a surprise Easter dinner Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create some beautiful little egg picks with some of those Dollar Tree speckled eggs. So the speckled eggs come with a hole in the bottom. You can take a shish kebab stick and just add a dab of hot glue and then poke your shish kebab stick in and instantly that creates an egg pick. And you're going to pay several dollars for egg picks at Hobby Lobby or Michael's and with these you guys are getting quite a few picks for only a dollar. I love this. They are great to use in floral arrangements, pretty much anything your heart desires for Easter. They fit perfectly into this beautiful arrangement. I only put a couple into this arrangement because I didn't want to take away from the bloomy garden, but I did feel like to make it very Easter and springy, we did have to have a couple of speckled eggs. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking one of their LED candles and I had this Dollar Tree black and white contact paper actually left over from Halloween. Believe it or not, I've saved it for that long. So I'm just fitting it to kind of make a sleeve around the candle. I did notice on Pottery Barn website that they're using a ton of black and white even in their Easter decor. So I really wanted to incorporate a little bit of that into my tablescape or into some of my French farmhouse displays that are in my dining room. So now I'm just taking that contact paper. I peeled the label off of the back and it sticks really nicely directly onto one of the Dollar Tree LED candles. Now this is not a real candle. Definitely do not use a real candle for this. Use an LED candle. And then I decided to add just something a little extra touch. You all know me. I love to go extra and I added some Dollar Tree jute twine. And then I had a beautiful customized candle. I feel like this looks really high end and it goes perfectly with a lot of the French farmhouse decor and DIYs that I've been sharing with you all. Again, I'll link a bunch of those down below if you all need some inspiration. These are Dollar Tree baskets that you're seeing. I was so excited to create these. I know a lot of you all have seen them and are making them. So thank you all for all of the inspiration and sharing your pictures on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. You all are amazing crafters. I'm super loving it and it's just a huge blessing to me. So here we go. Cute little candle, teeny tiny budget. 
For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you how to create an egg napkin ring. So you're going to take one of those little Dollar Tree foam eggs, add some hot glue to the front of it, and then take some of that Dollar Tree, I call this baby's breath, I think it's technically called gypso, and you're just going to hot glue on either side of your little egg. I'm using this because I could not find my other carrot, and I only bought one pack of those Dollar Tree carrots, so I'm going to have to mix and match my napkin rings. Now this drives me a little bit crazy because I'm trying to do a matchy matchy tablescape but in the end I was really pleased with it. I thought they came out really adorable and it's just another great little DIY if you want to do something different besides just the carrot or maybe you couldn't find the carrots. You can usually almost always find the little eggs. So here it is close up. Add that dab of hot glue the cute little egg, your gypso, and you have a beautiful, gorgeous, customized table napkin ring. And it is really next to nothing because I think there's six, six to 10 foam eggs that come in that. So for $2, $3, you guys have some beautiful napkin rings. So here are our adorable little egg napkin rings. I used the little orange ones, that way they kind of coordinated in with the carrot napkin rings. But this is a great idea if you guys end up having some mismatched napkin rings, but then still want to do something customized and adorable. I also used some of those Target Bullseye Playground bunnies. They're the terracotta ones. I think they look really beautiful and they kind of mix in with a little bit of those oranges that I used in the tablescape. I think this is absolutely adorable, very elegant, and very budget friendly. For the next Adele or Chi DIY, you're going to take one of those Peeps headbands and you're just going to trim off the little peep on the top. You're going to hot glue it to a napkin ring and then you have this really adorable customized napkin ring for your kid's Easter brunch table. You could also do this for a whimsical adult table as well. Now we're setting a Dollar Tree tablescape. So I used a white tablecloth. We used these white Dollar Tree placemats, the silver Dollar Tree chargers, white dinnerware with the round plate. And then I just took that square plate and turned it sideways. And I added in this beautiful floral, my sweet little Dollar Tree candle. I think this came out so elegant, so precious. And then the Dollar Tree napkin so lovely. Oh my goodness. This is just too much. Dollar Tree is also carrying these really adorable little egg candles. I added in some Dollar Tree jelly beans in and around the candle just to really get it festive and add some pops of pastel color to tie in the floral arrangement and then the greens that are in the table runner, and then the oranges. So that's a great idea too. If you guys want to take and tie all your pastels together, you can do that with your food, whether it be candies or little sandwiches, or even some extra little pops of fresh florals. If you wanted to add some fresh florals in and around some of your tablescape I hope you all are loving this and I hope you're so inspired just to create something beautiful. I think this is wonderful. Honestly, it made me want to have an impromptu Easter brunch. It was so festive. Even when Mr. Romantic came home, he was like, wow, what is this? So my daughter and I had so much fun planning this, creating this. It's been a huge blessing to have her home this week on spring break. I will definitely miss her when she goes back. In today's video, I am really excited to share with you six DIY French farmhouse inspired crafty decor projects. So we are going to be using items from the Dollar Tree or items that I have thrifted or that you may have even laying around your home that you could repurpose and recycle. And I have been wanting one of these beautiful lanterns to decorate with forever. So I decided to create one using everything I had on hand and all items from the Dollar Tree. So to get started, I went ahead and gathered up several Dollar Tree frames that I had left over from another project. For this lantern, I'll be using four 8x10 frames and then four of these Dollar Tree scrolly mirrors. I'm just going to go ahead and take everything out of the frame and I'm also removing the little tabs. Now you can see I removed them 
the wrong way and it kind of broke off a little bit of the frame. So when you remove the tabs, remove them and pull them towards you, not away from the frame. That will keep them from breaking. I learned that the hard way. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take the little Dollar Tree mirror frames. Originally, I thought that I wanted to try and pop the mirror out, but that wasn't to be had because they didn't come out very easily and I didn't want to end up cutting myself by breaking the mirror out. So I'm just, I decided to just go ahead and chalk paint over the mirror and the entire frame. So I'm using some homemade chalk paint that I mixed up. I used one cup of regular latex paint and half a cup of baking soda. And I went ahead and gave all my mirrors um, one coat and then now I'm just going in and I'm giving my frames one coat. I end up giving all of the mirrors and frames two coats on the front and then one coat on the back. Um, I definitely suggest go ahead and painting them in advance even though the drying time did make this project a little lengthy. So now I am going in with some E6000 glue and I'm running it down the long edge of the frame. I like to use E6000 glue and hot glue together. That way they will be more permanent and stay together better, but you could just use hot glue. Although if you really want your lantern to last, I definitely recommend using a stronger glue, but I like to mix them together. That way the hot glue will kind of hold it together while the E6000 glue has time to dry. So I just went ahead and E6000 glue the other side of my frame and then also added the hot glue and then continued this process until I got all of my frames glued together. Once I had all my frames glued together, I did let it dry for about an hour or two, and then I decided to go ahead and add my little mirror parts to the top of my frame. So these wouldn't glue on, so I decided to use a white pipe cleaner. It mixed in fairly well with the frames, and I just looped it around the top of the mirror, and then underneath each scrolly piece, and then I just twisted it together about two to three times. So that actually held up really well. I did this same process to all four sides and that way my little mirror pieces stayed up really nicely. Now I'm just removing the excess of the pipe cleaner on the end and that way it doesn't stick out. Now I'm using some of that Dollar Tree tin that comes on those welcome to our patch signs that they had out for Easter and I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this piece of tin to fit over the pipe cleaner because I didn't want the pipe cleaner to show. This is just a little added detail and since I'm trying to use all Dollar Tree items I thought this would be really cute. So I'm just taking some hot glue and I'm hot gluing this extra piece piece of tin on and then I cut another piece to go on top of that. I did find that it was easier to hot glue the top piece of tin on first and then do the second piece and I did brush paint the tin with a little bit of the white chalk paint just to help it kind of blend in and I am absolutely over the moon in love with this French farmhouse lantern. I think it came out super beautiful. Now I didn't leave any of the glass in the frames. These were actually mirrors from Dollar Tree so I wanted it to stay um, where there wasn't anything around it. That way I can put a really pretty floral coming out of it. But for now I'm using really romantic, beautiful candles and I just thought it gave a really nice glow to my entryway table. I feel like it looks very French farmhouse, very shabby chic and just very sweet and absolutely beautiful and perfect. Just what I've been dreaming of and had planned out in my head. I was really excited that it was able to all come together. excited with 
with how this project came out and I cannot wait to decorate it for the different seasons. So to get ready for our next DIY, I'm just taking a Dollar Tree basket and then this little basket that I picked up at the thrift store for $1.50. It came with this little fruit and basket liner inside. I am going to hang on to the other pieces in case I want to use them for another project, but I'm just going to take some of that chalk paint and I'm going to chalk paint the entire basket. So I did one coat on the inside of my basket and then two coats on the outside and I waited to chalk paint the very end of the basket until I got done chalk painting the inside. And then here's that Dollar Tree basket. It was originally green and I took some pink spray paint. I thought I wanted to make it pink, but then I decided I wanted to make it more neutral. That way it could transition into summer. And now I'm just using a little dab of black apple barrel craft paint. I want to give it a little bit of that French farmhouse vibe. And so I'm adding a little bit of the gray to the top part of the basket and then kind of in and around the basket weave just to give it a little bit of dimension. I do notice that in the craft stores and the specialty stores that these baskets that are painted are a little bit pricey sometimes so I thought why not for a dollar let's create our own and I knew it would be just perfect in this French farmhouse vignette that I'm creating in my entryway. So I turned the Dollar Tree basket sideways and then I added a really cute little handmade nest that I'm going to share with you guys how to make a little bunny that I had left over from years ago and voila we have a very cute very festive little French farmhouse vignette that I can change out the decor on the inside and even put it in my kitchen or just wherever suits my fancy. <laughs> So now I'm going to share with you all how to create a bird's nest out of a paper towel roll. So I'm just taking this paper towel roll and I'm cutting it in half and I'm kind of bending it out to kind of make it a little bit more flat and then I'm going to cut it in half again. And then I want to go ahead and kind of work it around just a little bit with my hands to kind of get it to bend up into the shape of a bird's nest. Now I'm adding some hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue the two pieces of paper towel cardboard together. You guys could use pretty much really any cardboard that you wanted, but it was nice that the um, paper towel roll or you could use a toilet paper roll kind of um, just naturally bends up together. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, now I'm adding a big giant dab of hot glue and some of that Dollar Tree Excelsior grass. This is kind of more in the pale color. I wanted to make a lighter bird's nest to go in with this white French farmhouse vignette that I'm doing. So I'm just going ahead and shaping it a little bit more. And then I did get some twigs from outside my house. This was just some old dead twigs that had dried up over winter. I cut them off and then I'm kind of forming them in and around the nest. They formed rather nicely, but I did go ahead and hot glue them underneath the edges of where I had glued the cardboard pieces together. That just helped them hold a little bit more. You could also take a piece of twine and wrap that around um, if that something that you felt like needed to be done. I also took a look at the bottom and decided that my bird really needed to build a real nest and so we went ahead and hot glued and then added some more of the mumbo jumbo that have fallen off the top part to the bottom and voila we have a beautiful very festive little nest perfect for spring. The bunny is nesting up in here and I love having the basket underneath because some of these spring birds nests do make a mess on my tables. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanted to reuse some of those plastic eggs that I had laying around, so I decided to go ahead and chalk paint a couple of them to go ahead and add them into my little Easter basket vignette here. I think these are really cute for the farmhouse style and to add in with the bunny and just a great way to reuse those plastic eggs that we all have laying around everywhere around this time of year. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm also reusing some of those hearts that I had left over from some DIYs during Valentine's Day. I'm just chalk painting the front of the heart and I did end up using two coats. If you guys can tell, I'm really trying to repurpose and reuse items that I already have on hand. That way I can go in and reorganize my craft stash once Easter gets here 
and know that I really didn't buy too many things, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so these are going to be perfect. And I am just using a little bit of that black apple barrel paint to mix in to make kind of some gray. I just painted it in the center part. And then I used some Elmer's glue and I just went across the heart with the Elmer's glue and glued on this little French saying and it says life is beautiful. So I was really excited for this. I just thought it would be perfect to add the little romantic touch of the heart in with the sweet little basket and just really getting festive with that cute little egg and bunny. Next DIY, I want to share with you all how to build a bird's nest out of a cottage cheese container. So we go through a lot of these and I've had my eye on these to make a bird's nest out of. So I just cut the top off and now I'm hot gluing in and around the side and I want to wrap the entire container with this scrap of kind of burlap colored fabric that I have and so I'm just going to continue to glue and wrap the fabric around the entire container and now I'm just cutting off the excess part of the fabric. I did decide also that I wanted to go ahead and put the brown fabric in and around the base and so I'm just hot gluing to make sure it's not too flappy in and around the bottom part of the container. And then I did go ahead and take another strip of the fabric and hot glue some to the bottom and then I just trimmed the excess off of that. I really love the shape of this container. I guess it's spring and I just keep thinking bird's nest. So anyway, I hope you guys are loving this. I'm just going around the edge and then I'm using up the rest of that Excelsior grass. I'm really happy to use the rest of this up because it's been floating around in my craft stash and it just gets everywhere. <laughs> so I'm so excited to make another cute little bird's nest here. This is also kind of similar to the one that we made out of the chicken can, but I'm just going around with some more of that old dead twigs and on this one I did go in with a piece of twine scrap that I had left over from another project and tie the edge of this on. So this made a, diff a little bit of a different shape of a bird's nest from the last one. The last one was kind of a little bit flatter and wider but I really like how unique they all look and how different they all look by using different sizes. To me, it looks a little bit more realistic. So now I'm just adding in my lovebirds and you guys saw me use these in one of my last DIY nests. There they are. Those are also from the Dollar Tree. They were actually from Christmas and they had sparkly heads. I just painted them with a tiny bit of craft paint. You guys can definitely do that. I know a lot of you um, had wondered if that was possible and so yes definitely you can add a little bit of paint to your birds um, to cover up any spots that you don't care for. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're just going to take some of that fruit. I had some from the Dollar Tree and I also had some that came in that little basket that I got at the thrift store. So I'm just taking it and I'm painting the fruit with some white chalk paint. I also did a DIY on this similar during Christmas where I added glitter to the fruit and a little bit of gold paint. So that's just another idea once the holidays kind of come. If you all need some fruit pieces to add into some of your florals or whatnot and you wanted them to be a little bit more of a muted tone. I think I did even go ahead and add a tiny bit of gray paint to the outside of this but I definitely didn't want the fruit to be gray. So here it is. I added an apple into the basket. I added that lemon. I might go back in with a little bit of color once the summer comes and do maybe some yellows. Anyway, but I did want this all to be completely neutral. This week, I am in the mood for white. So here it is, the entire display. I am so in love with it. I think it looks really clean, really fresh, perfect for spring. I can go in and add some pastels for Easter. If I want to do coastal for the summer, I can add in some seashell aspects and whatnot. So I am just really loving this. I hope you all are loving this. I really hope that you're inspired. It's such a blessing to have you here. I hope you guys are having fun crafting with me and I just thank you and just wish you all the best, best, best ever. So slow. Hold your breath. 
you in my arms all day. Easy little Easter centerpiece. So I grabbed one of these Dollar Tree chargers and I actually made a Christmas centerpiece. So I'm totally repurposing and reusing this. And I just hot glued a piece of styrofoam to the center to kind of give it just like a little center point. I'm also taking this deco mesh. It's kind of in um, a check pattern. And again, this was also left over from Christmas. And I'm going to just bunch it up together and kind of make like a just a quick little kind of bunchy bow here and tie it off with a zip tie and the next thing I want to do is figure out how I'm going to get the um, deco mesh to attach to the styrofoam that was a little bit tricky um, if I would have had like some little floral picks that would have been absolutely perfect but I decided just to use these um, greenery pieces I got these at Dollar Tree and so I'm going to use the greenery pieces and just gently poke them through the thinner part of the mesh and into the styrofoam piece so this is just going to be on my table and no big deal it doesn't have to be perfect now I'm going to take again another piece of that deco mesh and I was going to toss this because it was just kind of really just flouncy and I didn't think I was going to be able to repurpose and reuse it but I did spy it in my craft closet drag it out and also found this greenery I just love it when I think you know oh I don't have enough to um do crafts with and then I poke into my supplies and I realize I have way more honestly that I need and um, I love repurposing and reusing so now again I'm just going to add some more greenery and I love the Dollar Tree greenery you guys need to really check out their little floral section with their greenery they should be putting out some great stuff for spring I'm also popping some little eggs in to um, the greenery now I did trim them down these are a four pack for a dollar and change um and so I am trimming down the little kebab sticks and then I made one more kind of loop-de-loop -loop style bow here and then I'm going to tie that off again with a zip tie and then just pop that in. So basically I just really wanted to fill this out. I was thinking about doing a deco mesh wreath with this but I really honestly did not have enough deco mesh to do that and I spied this charger and knew it would be absolutely perfect and again, I am just going ahead and putting in some more greenery. And then this is where you can get really creative with it. I felt like it needed something more. It just kind of looked a little bit lumpy and flumpy. It's not bad, but you guys know I love just kind of going over the top. So I decided to take some of this spare ribbon that I had left over from decorating my mantle. And I'm making these quick little twisty bows. So you just take the loop ribbon, loop it over on itself, and then leave a tail. And then take your tails and make sure you dovetail those tails. And that way you'll have a cute little kind of like floofy um, ribbon piece and you can really stagger the ribbon so I really chose this blue and white I have quite a bit of blue and white going on in my dining room I thought that would be cute and so I'm just going to pop that in and I did like every other loopy bow so I did the egg bow and then the blue and white check bow and then some more egg bow and then some more blue and white check bow so you guys can just really get creative with this part I also am looking at it now um, and I'm thinking I may go back in and kind of trim up the mesh just a little bit maybe I don't know I do kind of like it looking a little bit messy and wild it's kind of fun um, and I didn't even think about how I'm also mixing the colors the black and white and the tan but it will probably work because I do have a lot of black and white on my table I have some DIY faux Mackenzie Childs um, in inspired goodies and then I also have a couple of real pieces as well I love buying them when they're on their big giant massive barn sale I'm also adding in this cute little um, lilac again also from Dollar Tree and then just a flickering flameless candle and I get those off of Amazon and I will link some flickering flameless candles in my Livy's Romantic Home Amazon store um, for you guys it's gonna be in the description box of my YouTube video so here is how it turned out and I just popped it into my cute little living room Easter setting this is just a fun idea to share with you guys on how you guys can make something really pretty on a budget and re kind of repurpose and reuse some of your goodies For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you guys how to make a super cute little jazzy Dollar Tree egg. Okay, so Dollar Tree has these jumbo eggs. Actually, I think 
These were 98 cents at Walmart. Anyway, grab a jumbo egg and some ribbon and go to work. So I'm going to take this ribbon and loop it over on itself and just gently hot glue it to the top part of the egg. You can see this is just a quick little loop and I'm going to go every other loop. So I started with the egg ribbon and I did get this ribbon at Walmart and then I'm adding the little blue check gingham ribbon and I'm just going to continue to kind of do that as I go around the egg. So you can bunch them up really tight and add tons of loops or you can just add a couple little loops. I believe I used four on this one and then on the next one later in this video I'm going to use several more. So it's going to be a little bit more bunchy with more ribbon but this one I did want to add some pretty little Excelsior moss to and again you're just going to loop that ribbon and then you do want to remember also to dovetail the ends of your ribbon or cut them in a side motion. You don't want to leave the ends of your ribbon just hanging out. So to dovetail the ribbon, what I'm talking about is you cut a little triangle um, in the bottom part of the ribbon and super easy to do. And it just really gives your creations a really nice boutique finish. Okay. So now we're just going to take some of this Excelsior moss and we're going to hot glue the moss in and around the ribbon. So this is just going to kind of it's going to kind of pull the ribbon in and it's also going to kind of make it feel a little bit bird's nesty, I guess you would say. And so we're just going to hot glue some more hot glue around and add some little more bird's nesty garden goody vibes and just kind of push that into the ribbon gently and again you guys could really do anything with this. You don't have to add this. You could add florals or you could just leave the ribbon as is too. Dollar Tree also carries these cute little uh, bundle of spring berries. And so I'm just going to use some of the yellow ones and hot glue those in and around the little moss. And then you can add florals. You can add more goodies, whatever suits your fancy. Even some mini eggs would be super cute. I honestly haven't been... Um, buying a whole lot of Easter decor because I really do have quite a bit on hand left over from last year. So I'm really trying to push myself to repurpose and reuse. I did find these pretty little yellow flowers and decided that they would be perfect as well as some of these cute little purple flowers. I really want to make it feel um, just like a bursting with joy Easter egg and I also love doing these style of um, eggs because then you guys can use them all about your house. You can hang them from your mantle. You can pop them into a little basket and they look so fancy. And wouldn't this be a nice treat to make for your kiddo or your grandkid or maybe your neighbor that needs a little lift for the day? Just make them a really pretty little fancy Easter egg. Um, I think I'm going to give this um, a couple of these to some of my friends as well. I just thought these were so fun and pretty and just beautiful and elegant. And so there you guys have that. We have a couple of little fancy Easter eggs on a total budget. Hope it brings a smile to your face, so much joy, and inspires you to create something as well. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make a super cute little Easter, um, just kind of fun, easy basket. So I'm going to take one of the little Dollar Tree moss baskets and then one of these hanging plant baskets. And I just want to make, you know, something that you would see in one of those kind of high-end boutiques that you go to. So you're going to take and pop your little moss, uh, moss basket. I guess that's not really moss. Anyway. It's the liner baskets that they sell at Dollar Tree. Pop it into your cute little hanging basket and you can rehang it maybe out on your porch or you can do what I'm gonna do. And I just found some cute little moss First, I'm going to put down some Walmart bags um, to kind of give it some fluffy. I didn't have as much moss on hand as I needed to completely fill it, but that's okay. You're not going to see those Walmart bags when we're done. I'm just going to gently tuck that moss into my little basket here. And I do like having the little wire basket around it because it does give it added stability, which is really nice. So this is kind of just like an oversized little bird's nest or bunny nest. You can make it really into anything you want. So grab your favorite bird 
birds, your little speckled eggs, maybe even some fun sparkling eggs like these, and go to town having fun. I am popping them off of their kebab stick to kind of put them in here. Now these are at Dollar Tree. They're $4, or they're four eggs to a pack and they're about 25 I believe at our store now um, and so I'm just gonna pop them in to the little basket and again get very creative with this use whatever little eggs you have on hand and here's another idea for you guys I found this little um, bunny at the Target dollar spot I think he was five dollars and then I'm just gonna use some of the Dollar Tree speckled eggs and I'm gonna pop that in here and you can even put one of your larger eggs in here that you're making just whatnot anything that's gonna make your heart sparkle and shine and make it feel a little bit more festive now for this next DIY I want to show you guys how to take one of those one dollar eggs and paint it to make it match your decor, make it a little bit more subtle, maybe more French country romantic. I do love the shiny goodness and the funness of this, but I wanted to give you guys a different option. You know, maybe you want something a little bit more subtle and neutral. You can take some chalk paint. All you have to do is pull the little topper off the egg. And again, I believe I did get this egg at Walmart for 98 cents. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree has this jumbo egg, but I do need to know that they have some eggs that you guys can play around with. So anyway, I did give it an entire coat of chalk paint, and I did find this chalk paint on Amazon, and it works pretty well. It's not quite as good as the Waverly chalk paint from Walmart. I really do prefer that one um, the best, but I love also that I can pop onto Amazon, and it'll come straight to my house along with some of the other necessities that I like to order off of there. I'm a little bit spoiled with that one. Um, and then I did let this set aside and dry um, and then I did give it one more coat and so then after that happens you guys can get creative with it and just use it as is with a white egg you could even take some stain and make it look a little bit more French country you can add your pink little bow back on which is what I did and then I also decided to take some pitberry garland and decorate it with a little tidy bit of garland I thought that would be pretty and um, really girly this would be something honestly I would have used in my daughter's room when she was a little baby girl I did so many pink things for her she had a pink car seat and a pink stroller and a pink canopy bed and a pink Barbie house and pink dresses I think my heart just really bloomed when I had her as far as you know the pink stuff was concerned and my heart bloomed when I had both of my kiddos but you know it's really fun having a little girl as far as decorating and having pink is around um, I feel like both of both boys and girls are such a huge joy and they're such a huge joy in different ways you know I think when you have a little boy your heart falls in love for the very first time and I know that that I felt that way when I had my son he was my first and then my daughter so I was so blessed to have both of them um, but anyway I got, got off track there guys but I'm adding a couple of cute little white flowers to the top of this and bam, we have this pretty little romantic egg. It's a little bit more subtle and subdued than the sparkly egg was, but I feel like it's just as beautiful. And if you like that shabby, chic, um, romantic look, this one it might be just for you. And I hope you're inspired and feeling blessed by this craft. For this next DIY, I want to share with you guys a fun little easy Easter plate. So I found these beautiful napkins at Walmart and I'm going to take this little clear plate, but first I'm going to take a Dollar Tree bucket and just cut the size of the base of the plate. Um, and again, I think that these were Pioneer Woman napkins, but I thought the bunny on them was so beautiful. Now I bought them last season. I haven't checked Walmart this season to see if they have the same one, but I really am telling you guys should be able to find a cute little napkin, either Walmart, Tuesday morning, Dollar Tree to be able to do a similar craft to this. Um, and so I'm just going to Mod Podge it to the base of this clear plastic plate. Now this plate is plastic, but you could do this exact same style craft on a glass plate. I love this craft. I know I probably share it with you guys every year and every season, but I feel like it's so magical 
especially if you're on a budget, you can buy a pack of these plastic, you know, clear plates for a couple of dollars and completely remake a cupboard just by Mod Podging something pretty on it or painting the little plastic plate. But this makes it look like it's almost like a little China bunny plate. And think about how less expensive that is than buying a whole new set of seasonal plates. So that's why I love sharing this with you guys, because if you didn't see it last year, you might see it this year and get inspired, you know, and it feels good to be able to decorate. And sometimes we can't always decorate seasonally because it's just not in our budget. So this might be in your budget or this might just be a fun idea. These would also be fun to do with your um, kiddos or grandkids if they like to craft, you know, and use the glue and the paint. And here's how it turned out. Now I did add two white coats of um, the chalk paint over the bunny and let that dry. And that way it shows through a little bit better. And speaking of bunnies, there's Benji Bear and his little bunny rabbit. He was really wild today. I took him for his walk, but it was so cold outside. I really didn't get to get him worn out. So he... <laughs> You can tell he's really happy and excited to be flopping around. For this next DIY, we're going to make a jazzy Easter egg. So we're just going to take one of those little $1 eggs. I believe these are from Walmart, maybe Dollar Tree, I don't know. And we're going to jazzy up this egg with some cute little ribbon. Um, I did another one of these and added moss. For this one, we're just going to stick mainly to florals and um you know, just wired ribbon. So this wired ribbon is from Walmart and you're going to take the wired ribbon and just make a little loop. So you can see that I'm just kind of taking, I'm adding hot glue, then I'm going to take the ribbon and just make a loop. You guys, this is so easy. And then you just press the ribbon loop into the side of the egg. So you're just making a very, very simple loop. It's so easy. You can take and kind of ruche up the base of your ribbon. And you also want to dovetail your ends or make the ends of your ribbon really pretty, especially if you're going to do, be doing this type of craft for a show or for something that you want to sell or for a neighbor you want to make sure your ends of your ribbon are always nice and clean don't leave them don't make a really beautiful craft and then leave a ribbon that's frayed it will make your craft not as beautiful and it will make it kind of tattered looking and unless you're going for that look then that's another thing but anyway so continue to add loads of pretty ribbon now for this one for this egg I chose um, the little Easter egg ribbon and then also the yellow gingham ribbon and this ribbon is in the Easter section currently at Walmart at least it was at my store now I was at a super center so I'm not for sure if it's in the regular stores or not but I did find some there I also know that Michaels carries very similar styles ribbon and I'm not sure if Hobby Lobby has the same kind of Easter ribbon but I'm pretty much guessing they should have some type of cute Easter ribbon for you guys um, to play around with and these kind of remind me honestly of some of the ornaments like the large oversized ornaments that I do seasonally um, so this is kind of like an Easter ornament and these are great to hang from cupboards from mantles if you're doing an Easter Christmas tree if you want to give something nice to a neighbor or friend I just think these are so sparkly and happy and shiny and fun and so I hope you guys are inspired to create something really cute for someone you love or for your home. Um, and you don't even have to do this on top of an egg. Now this idea could be, you know, on top of a lantern or it could be on top of just anything that you want to top off and decorate and make fabulous on a budget. And it's also a great way to repurpose and reuse ribbon. And in this video, if you guys have noticed like a little bit of a funny sound, I actually have my coat on in my studio. It's pretty cold out here. And when I run the heat, you guys can hear it in the background. And Benji Bear was barking so much. I decided to sit him on my lap. So if you hear a rustling in this video, it's Benji Bear wrestling around in my lap. He's being such a sweet, good boy. So I can get this video out to you guys. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually film, edit, and, um, or I craft, film, edit, and post my videos all in one day. So it's a pretty exciting, intense day, um, but I love sharing this with you guys. So as always, I ask that you comment and let me know what's your favorite DIY in this video. Which one will you be recreating? Drop that comment down below so you can enter my Cricut giveaway. I'm so excited to give away a Cricut Joy for you guys. The first Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna create a really beautiful, sparkling, glittering glass jar. So you're just gonna take a glass jar from the Dollar Tree, 
I'm actually using one of my old Bath and Body Works candle jars, and you're going to do a whole coat of Mod Podge on the inside of your jar. You want to coat the entire inside of the jar with a very thin layer of Mod Podge. Don't get it too thick and goopy, or it'll get kind of weird and icky. Then you take your glitter, and you just want to roll your glitter on the inside of your jar because you want the entire jar to be coated with glitter. And you're going to actually do this process two to three times, depending on how full you want your glittery look to be. So once you have the first layer on, you want to let it dry about two hours in between coats. You're going to shake out the excess glitter and then save that glitter because you're going to roll it around in the jar again. Then you're going to completely coat the inside of your jar again on the inside with more Mod Podge and then you're going to add glitter again. I love to do these jars and I usually do three coats to really get a good covering and then at the very end of this if you want to seal your glass jar on the inside so you can store things in it you want to add one more layer of Mod Podge on the top of that. So you can see I'm really using my glitter. I'm reusing it so just have like a little glitter plate ready and you can reuse your glitter and continue to add your coats. These are all to the inside of your glass jar and then you can um, add makeup brushes inside of this you could add some Coco Chanel letters to the outside of that comment let me know if you guys want to see me do one of these but I just added some beautiful pearls and roses and I think it comes out so gorgeous and very girly and oh so glam Okay, you guys, so I have this picnic basket. Again, I got this from my mom's. She stored craft supplies in it. It's really pretty trashed, but I think picnic baskets are really versatile. If you guys find them at a flea market or a thrift store, definitely grab them because they're great for extra storage. And we're gonna paint this one. We're going to Paris with these DIYs. So I hope you guys grab your berets and a cute Paris outfit, and let's get to crafting. I'm also starting out this DIY with my homemade chalk paint. Now, I'm gonna call it a French gray because we're going to Paris. And of course, in Paris, we have to have French style colors. I ended up adding two coats of my Frenchy Paris Gray chalk paint to the outside and the inside of the basket and I did give it several times for it to dry. Now I'm just going in with some of my Dollar Tree letters and I'm adding the words Paris to the inside of my basket. My idea for this is to create a Paris inspired basket actually that I can store things in and I want to be able to leave the um, inside of the picnic basket live lit up so you can see the cute little Paris letters and I think it turned out really adorable. I did throw in um, that thrift store jacket that you guys saw me use in my trash to treasure ruffled basket project that was a couple videos back. You guys check that out if you have a chance and here's some of the magazines actually that some of my work has been featured in that creating vintage charm was one of the first ones that really touched my heart because I got the cover of that one and it just made me believe more in my art. So now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna use one of those Halloween um, hats. This is one of those tinsel decor pieces and I just wanna take the entire tinsel off of this. So basically what I wanna create though is an umbrella floral. And I don't have an umbrella on hand for this and I have had this DIY in my head for a while. So I just knew that we could hopefully attempt this and give it a go. So I'm cutting off the end. If you guys end up using one of these hats or just grab an umbrella if you have one, and trust me, it would probably be easier. I'm also using one of those Dollar Tree tablecloths. Now these tablecloths are very thin, so I'm just using a very thin layer of glue, and I'm just hot gluing the tablecloth to either side in kind of this triangle shape that points down. I did leave extra fabric in the front so I can stuff my umbrella 
down in the center and I just took a couple of paper towels to kind of stuff down in there. And then I decided I needed an extra piece of the tablecloth on the back to kind of contain <laughs> this entire project. And so I'm just hot gluing another little piece and this is actually to the back of my tablecloth umbrella decor piece. <laughs> so now I'm just putting in some of those pieces of paper towel. I think I used four or five paper towels just kind of folded together and pushed down in. And then I'm using a Dollar Tree napkin ring that I had hot glued one of those cute little Dollar Tree bows to the front. I am just adding that to the base to kind of give it like the end of what an umbrella would kind of look like, kind of sort of. And then I also had some of those bamboo sticks on hand. And so I just hot glued two of them together and they are I'm just poking them down in the end and then I'm kind of hot gluing them to the front of this cute little umbrella decor piece because I wanted it to look like those were kind of little um, spokes of the umbrella coming up. Now that I have my little sticks glued to the front, I wanted to take a flap of the tablecloth and just kind of flap it over and glue that on down. And then I also glued a piece of burlap ribbon around the top as well. And then I'm just putting in one of those Dollar Tree pieces of styrofoam kind of in the cone shape to fit down in there. You could probably use any shape of styrofoam, but this is what I had on hand. And then I'm using a lot of Dollar Tree florals with these beautiful hydrangeas and these beautiful rows. Roses. And then I did have two larger roses that I believe I got at Michael's craft store last season. I used two of those kind of fluffier roses, but I just continued to add greenery. This was just some greenery that I had left over from another project. I did use a chenille pipe cleaner stem at the top for my umbrella handle. And then I added just kind of some loopy bows, again, ribbon that I already had on hand. I added some loopy bows to the base of this and also to the top. I really admire those really beautiful umbrella florals and I just knew that I could dupe it or create it somehow. I think it came out really, really sweet. It definitely can never be used as an umbrella because it is not the sturdiest in the world, but it is absolutely adorable and very cheerful and very French inspired. I definitely think so. I hope you guys do as well. I think it looks beautiful in this space and I cannot wait to share with you some more of these DIYs. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we are just going to cover some old books that I had with some Dollar Tree brown craft paper. So you're just going to take the book, you're going to place it inside the piece of craft paper and you want to cut two inches on each side of the craft paper. And then you're going to find the edge and you're just going to kind of crease it and then you're going to remove your book and this is really an old-fashioned way of covering books comment and let me know did you guys used to cover your books with um, brown paper bags that your mom had from the grocery store we actually did when I was in school so anyway you're going to place your book back inside once you have both those creases done. You're going to fold it over and you're just going to take those little notches right there and you're going to slide them over your book. Now be very careful because the Dollar Tree craft paper is really thin and so one little piece of my book actually up at the corner got kind of torn, but it's not the end of the world. You can always tape it, glue it, or just like me, you just go ahead and roll with it. And so then once you have that side done, you can go ahead and fold it over and put the other side in as well. I decided my book needed a little bit something extra and romantic because I'm dreaming of Paris and I always think Paris is very romantic and so I decided to add this pretty little Dollar Tree doily. You can find these in the wedding section in a huge pack. You can make tons of crafts with these doilies but I'm just very gently hot gluing it to the front of my book. I really feel like it gives it some interest and some whimsy so just gently glue each side. I just did kind of the top edges in and around 
around and then I just laid them back down and you guys can really get creative with this. You could use different colored doilies. You could add some stamps or stickers to the fronts or sides of these. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to do two books with the doilies one on top and one in the center, and then just one plain book, just to give it a little bit of visual interest and for it not to be so staged. And so now I'm just adding in a really beautiful silk ribbon that my lovely friend and subscriber on here sent me, Lisa. Thank you again. I'm just loving all this beautiful ribbon that you sent me. And I'm just tying it in this really sweet little shoelace bow. And so a shoelace bow is just a bow like you would be tying your shoelaces. And I think it looks really beautiful. Of course, I did have to go a little bit extra on this. And I just used a paint sample that was kind of about the same shade of pink. And then I had these French letters that I wanted to cut out. And this one says, I believe, life is beautiful or a beautiful life or something along those lines in French. It was French font that I had printed out on my computer and so I'm just gluing this to the top part of this little pink tag with some Elmer's glue and then I also ended up adding a little piece of Dollar Tree Rose contact paper to the top of this. Again, you guys can get super creative with this part. I love making homemade tags. And I did tie this on with some of that jute twine that you find in the Dollar Tree automotive section. Oh my goodness, I am so in love with these soft pastel colors. I think they're really beautiful for springtime. I also think they make the perfect um, colors to add to like a dressing table, maybe in your special favorite spot if you're de decorating with shabby chic or just a girly glam. I think they're so soft and beautiful. And this little set just really touched my heart. It just really brought so much joy to me. I actually put it in a little corner of my living room and I will probably end up moving this kind of more back to my beauty space is really what I had in mind for it. But for right now, because it is still spring, I'm leaving it out. It's just so beautiful and so whimsical and just transports me to a different time and place and hopefully it's transporting you guys to Paris as well. So the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just taking this cute little five by seven frame and this was actually a birthday card that Mr. Romantic had given me. And so I didn't want the birthday part to show through. I do save some of my really pretty cards. And so I feel like this was a really great way to reuse it. And so I'm just cutting out a piece of that rose Dollar Tree contact paper. I feel like that goes in with the kind of the French farmhouse glam vibe as far as tying in those blacks and whites with the black lettering and also with the little books that we just created and so I'm just putting the frame back together and how beautiful is this voila we have this beautiful piece of French style art or just whimsical art I think it looks perfect in this setting I love the pink and white stripes on this beautiful dish. I actually picked up this set at TJ Maxx a couple seasons back. And then that beautiful Dollar Tree candle. And I'm so in love with this space. It's so precious. These big roses just make my heart melt. I cannot wait to share with you guys. I have actually some tea roses that will be blooming in my backyard this season. Hopefully cross my fingers, my roses do good. And they're very similar to how these roses look. So I think that's what made my heart smile. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I am just going to take these Dollar Tree gift boxes and you can see they've been painted already once or twice but I want to paint them this really beautiful French gray that we used on the picnic basket. My idea for this is is to create some really cute 
storage containers. So for the first one, I know that I need a storage container to put my remotes in. And so I wanted to go ahead and do this one for my remotes. And then I'm going to come up with a couple of more DIYs for the other two. Now, if you remember from my trash to treasure projects, I also had found these striped, the striped pantsuit that was in bad shape, but I was able to cut the pant leg off and it was cuffed. <laughs> and lo and behold, it fit perfectly over this box that pant leg did. Look at this, you guys took this out. I'm so excited because I still have some of that fabric left over. So I just plopped my remotes down in here. Now it's a little lined basket. It kind of covers up the ickiness from me having already crafted on that box. And we have a new beautiful little remote holder. <sighs> I'm in love. Let's go to Paris. Are you guys ready? Pack your bags. Let's go. I'm so ready for a vacation. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just loving this. So fun, so adorable, and ooh la la. The other thing I have to share with you all is this beautiful purplish pink tree that is blooming outside in my front yard and for the life of me it has slipped my mind what this tree is called. I have two in my backyard as well so this is one of my favorite times of spring. When this tree blooms it just feels like I'm in a fairy wonderland. I love it blessed to have it. It does turn green in the summer, but I also wanted to share with you all that Growth Collaborative is offering all of my viewers a five piece free gift set. I will have it linked down below in the description box. That is with a $20 purchase, but right now is the best time to buy because they have their springtime fragrances with their peony, lilac, and check out these bottles, you guys. They're so beautiful. I know you'll love them. So for these Dollar Tree DIYs, I really want to share with you all how you can give your home some pops of spring on a teeny tiny budget. So to get ready for these Dollar Tree DIYs, we're going to create a really adorable little potting bench. You'll need two Dollar Tree signs, some of those tumbling tower blocks, two of these Dollar Tree garden decor kind of planters with the stakes on them, hot glue, and a craft knife and some paint. So right now I'm just gonna remove the little hangers from these two signs. What I wanna do is I wanna create a little bench for my garden bench. So I'm gonna take my two cute signs and I'm going to line them end to end. And I wanna make them as long as the garden decor piece. There's little notches on the end of each garden decor decor piece that I know that I can run a pipe cleaner through to attach the signs on either end because the signs also have holes. So when you're cutting off your ends, make sure you cut off the ends that don't have the holes on them. Now I'm just using a tape measure to draw a straight line and then I'm going to take a crafting knife and I'm going to just score this sign. It takes about three times. You don't have to cut all the way through these signs. They're really pretty thin, so you're just gonna score it about three times, and then you should be able to kind of bend it in half, and that's gonna give you a nice clean edge. And if your edge gets kind of icky, you can also take some sandpaper and just make your ends with the sandpaper a little bit uh, nicer, which is what I did with this. I also used sandpaper to get the rest of the little sticker that's on the back of the Dollar Tree sign off. And then I went in with my favorite Mrs. Myers cleaners, and I do like to try to clean as I go when I'm crafting, especially when it comes to sandpaper dust. Now I'm just lining this up, and unfortunately I realized I did cut these a little bit too short. Not sure how that happened, probably because I should have measured better. Anywho, now we're going to take some E6000 glue and some hot glue, and I'm adding a dab of E6000 glue and some hot glue to the bottom of this tumbling tower block, and I'm working from the part of the sign that has the little signage on it because I'm going to flip it over once I create these legs. So I'm using two of the tumbling tower block games and I'm just gluing them together. And I'm going to do this on all four sides. 
Now, the other thing I suggest after I got done with this project, I thought I was able to eyeball it a little bit better than I did, but some of my legs were a little bit uneven, so you may want to take and draw a straight line down so you can mark them out and put them on there evenly. Just a little tip from what I learned from this experiment. So once I get all of these on, I did decide to, to stabilize it a little bit more and add a block to, to the top part of each one of these legs. You may even want to stabilize it more um, and add blocks to either side, which is what I did as well. That just gives it that extra stability. And I feel like the E6000 glue also is going to help it hold on a lot longer as well. It was a really nice day, so I decided to take my project outside and do some spray painting outside. Originally, I had painted these Dollar Tree little decor pieces in aqua blue, but I decided to take them back to a dark brown color because my idea was to go dark brown with the entire project and then go over it with this really pretty antique white cream colored paint that my aunt gave me. So I'm just going underneath this um, little bit of table legs and in and around the bottom piece of this sign with a dark walnut. It's the 2X by Rust-Oleum spray paint. I really do love that spray paint. If you guys have a little bit extra, I think it's about $4 a bottle. So now I'm just going in with some of that antique white paint and I did mix it up to some homemade chalk paint, which a lot of you all ask me how to mix the homemade chalk paint. It's one cup of paint to half a cup of baking soda. It's great for craft projects, but I would get regular chalk paint for furniture, just an FYI. I gave everything two coats of the antique white paint and then I went in with some of that black apple barrel craft paint from Walmart and I did this while the paint was wet. I just kind of added that in to kind of give it a little bit of an aged look. I added it in and around the edges and then in just a couple stripes through the center. Now I'm going to add my garden gate on to the little bench legs. So there's a little spot in the side of each garden gate that you can string your pipe cleaner through and then you'll just attach that to the little hole that was in the top of your sign where your sign hanger was. So then you could just twist those pipe cleaners together and voila, you have your garden bench attached. And then I just took some wire cutters, snipped off the excess. I did decide to make my garden bench one long piece. And so I added an extra piece of the sign that I had cut off originally at the end because I got it too short. And I just hot glued underneath this. And then I also hot glued a little block to the back part of the decor piece where the bench and the decor piece met. And I painted those and they were all ready to go. And then I just cut part of that sign in half and I hot glued it to the bottom to kind of give it some extra oomph. Now I would suggest that hot gluing these I would add the E6000 glue as well because they weren't on as sturdy as they should have been. So I will go back in and add some of that E6000 glue because I do want this little cute garden bench to be something that will last. And now I'm just adding some of these darling little DIY plants and they are looking so super duper cute. For the next DIY, we are just going to take some of that chalk paint that we mixed up and chalk paint the outsides 
of these cute little clay pots. So I picked two of these up at the thrift store and the other one is a Dollar Tree size. Um, but get creative, you guys. I think these are about a dollar at Walmart as well. So I did do two coats of chalk paint and then I do go a little bit into the interior edge if I know I'm going to use them for indoor purposes. I do plan on hopefully though having a little herb garden once the season gets a little bit closer. Although right now it is still really, really cold at night. It's nice during the day, but it gets really cold at night. So it's not time to set plants out. You guys comment and let me know, is it still getting down to freezing where you all are at? And when do you set your plants out? I usually set them out in May. So now I'm just adding some of that Dollar Tree styrofoam. This is the next part of the Dollar Tree DIY. So you can pick up some styrofoam from Dollar Tree and I didn't even have to hot glue the styrofoam. It just fit perfectly down into these pots. And now I'm using some really pretty Dollar Tree flowers that I just, these were leftover flowers from another project. So definitely check your stash and see if you have some cute flowers. They're hydrangeas. Um, it looks like some uh, little lilac branches, also some cherry blossoms. For the life of me, I cannot remember what the pink flowers are called. But anyway, and now I'm just adding in some cute little daisies. I also had a really pretty rose that I used. And so just get creative. I really wanted this to feel like it was a springtime garden so i wanted the flowers to kind of look like they were naturally blooming so i tried not to place them too perfectly but for them to just kind of be a little bit wild i love that wild english garden feel I had all my flowers placed in where I wanted them. I took some of this Dollar Tree moss and I just kind of put it in and around the top part of the floral arrangement. They also had different things mixed in with it, but I thought that gave it kind of a natural, again, English garden feel. So gather up what you have that's somewhat natural. And if you have some moss, throw some moss in there. And now I'm just adding them to this cute little garden decor bench and I think this is absolutely adorable it only cost us a couple of dollars and voila we have brought springtime inside of our homes now for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're going to create a super cute little wreath so I had this wreath that I had added some moss to left over from another project and then this is the bird's nest that we made out of a tuna can from one of my other DIYs that I will link down below I'm just adding two pipe cleaners to the back of it and then a strip of of felt over those pipe cleaners. You could also use a piece of ribbon or just whatever fabric you have on hand, but I wanted to give it some little arms so it would attach to this wreath. And so once the hot glue had dried, I just took the little twisty ties and I twisted them together and then I snipped those off. I liked using the tuna can because it did have, um, it's actually a chicken can, but we made a bird's nest out of a chicken can. And um, basically just glue a bunch of bird's nesty stuff all around that can and voila, you have it ready to go. So anyway, now I'm just adding a cute little Dollar Tree bow that I had made. Again, this was from another project that I had taken apart a while ago. I added that to the top with a pipe cleaner and then I decided my nest needed some goodies. So I added a Dollar Tree moss stone and then this Dollar Tree egg and a couple of more eggs because it is springtime and so our birds are nesting and they have lots of cute little eggs. These were also some of those Dollar Tree eggs that I just painted with some pastel colors. And you could hang this wreath very easily by just adding a little twist tie to the top or a piece of fabric. But I decided to set this in front of my cute little bunny picture. I thought it looked really adorable. This was another DIY that we did. I have the graphics fairy link down below where you can find that bunny image and there's also several different vintage bunny images that you guys might want to choose from. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take a Dollar Tree frame and you're going to remove the glass from the frame. And what we want to create is a cute little Dollar Tree fairy garden picture sign. 
So you're going to take one of those fairy garden figurines and this was just the packaging that it came in that I had saved and so I'm just going to hot glue the packaging to the front part of the frame and that's going to create the little backdrop for my little fairy garden picture and you guys could also just use some pretty little scrapbook favor paper. I think they have some blue sky scrap paper at Michael's for about 97 cents. So just trim off the excess and then you're going to take a bit of extra Dollar Tree moss or you could also use a Celsius grass or just whatever kind of goodies that you have on hand because fairies use all kinds of bits and bobs. So now I'm taking one of those little Dollar Tree fairies and I'm just going to glue her in to where it says fairy crossing right there. And then of course this fairy has to have some beautiful little sunflowers and a cute little pink petal to finish it off. And there it is. I did go in with a bit of that apple barrel black craft paint and then I brushed that on I just kind of dry brushed it and then I also brushed some of the antique white paint kind of over that I wanted it to match the little garden bench so it's all kind of a, a little indoor garden set I thought it looked really cute and oh so perfect for this little space now Dollar Tree has a lot of the little garden fairy things out again, so check your craft section areas. They also have them on the end caps. I'm adding a Dollar Tree gnome. And then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna make a personalized fairy garden. I know my girls really love that. And so I'm using this foam sticker from Dollar Tree and I'm hot gluing it to the moss stone. I wanna surprise my daughter. This is gonna be her little fairy garden corner. So I'm just adding this little butterfly chair and then the cute little moss stone and the cute little gnome. And then that's gonna make this really special kind of fairy garden spot. Now I did have a whole DIY video on how to create a really cool fairy garden, but if you just want a little fairy garden space, I think this is really sweet and just a fun little spot to kind of create and whatever little one might be in your house would really enjoy playing with it. So here is the entire thing with the beautiful wreath, the DIY garden bench, the sweet bunny picture, and the beautiful little florals in our sweet fairy garden. I hope you all are loving it and are super inspired. I just wanted to share with you all the little yellow jonquils that are blooming in my front yard. My cat Tinky plays in the bed, so the greenery is taking a bit of a beating. And here is my little outdoor bicycle. I created this DIY floral with you guys during the Valentine's Day DIYs. My bow does need some fluffing. It's been really windy lately, so everything's been kind of taking a bit of a beating. Now, also in my backyard, I have this really beautiful little purple ground cover. I planted this years ago and I planted it because I have a lot of bedrock in my backyard and so really it's really hard for anything to grow so I thought a really beautiful ground cover would be nice and I love how the purple blooms are so during spring. Hello and welcome to my beach cottage, Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. So many of you guys love to decorate in the coastal beach style, whether it be in a smaller bathroom or your entire home. This definitely lends well to the spring and summer season because all of the projects are light colored and fun and whimsical and it just definitely puts you in the mood for some summer and beach vibes. So who is ready for some sunshine and a little bit of beach dreaming? For today's Dollar Tree DIYs, we are going to use items from the Dollar Tree to create a beautiful coastal beach vacation vibe. So many of these DIYs that you're going to see are Pottery Barn inspired. I love seeing what they're up to, including this beautiful blue piece of artwork that we created using Dollar Tree supplies. On their website, it was $600, but we're going to do it for just a couple dollars. Okay, you guys, so we are going to take a piece of Dollar Tree poster board, and I just have some water, a paintbrush, a paint plate, and several different colors. Now, these are the Apple Barrel acrylic paints from Walmart. I have Pool Blue and Key West, and then I had a company by the name of Arteza send me some acrylic colors. These are both blues. 
So we're going to create this beautiful piece of wall art. I'm just taking this thrift store frame and I'm marking it out. Now I'm going to tell you guys before you guys paint your picture, definitely cut your poster board out to fit the size of your frame. I learned that the hard way and it almost became a craft disaster. But what I want to do for this Pottery Barn inspired piece is I did pull up the Pottery Barn art. So I had something to kind of reference and I'm just making some beautiful clouds. So basically this scene was, was clouds in the sky and then just kind of a real whimsical kind of beachy space. So I'm just using circular motions and I'm using some of the aqua and the blue paints mixed in with some of the whites. So just get creative with this. It does not have to be perfect. Once I painted a bunch of a swirly kind of clouds in the sky, I want to just paint a darker blue line across the bottom portion of my piece of poster board. So this is just poster board from the Dolly Tree and some acrylic paints. And for the clouds, I was doing a circular motion. So I'll go in with some blue and then I'll blend it in with some whites. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because clouds aren't perfect and they're constantly changing. So just use some blues and some whites and blend in a circular motion. And then for our ocean part, or sea, or lake, or whatever body of water you prefer, we're going to just go ahead and do that darker blue line. And then I'm taking some white and I'm kind of blending underneath that blue line. Then I'm going in with some of that Key West Apple Barrel paint underneath that, and then a little bit of the darker blue over that. Again, I'm just doing layers across the entire portion to just kind of give that um, feeling of waves. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. So I dip my brush in a little bit of water also to kind of blend those acrylic paints if they get to be a little bit sticky and don't want to blend as much. And I like a really whimsical kind of dreamy um, look for my art. So but you guys can be more precise and um, how whatever suits your fancy you guys just go for it now I'm blending a darker blue over on this side and I did go ahead and add some sand to this side I washed out my brush I mixed a little bit of white paint and a little bit of some espresso apple barrel craft paint from Walmart and here it is my beautiful piece of beach wall art it went into this frame after a bit of a struggle so definitely you guys cut out your piece of poster board before you start painting and make sure you get it fit into your frame. So I hope you guys are loving this. This is such a fun way to redecorate your home. And if you guys go to Walmart, the Apple Barrel Craft Paints are only about 37 cents each. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, you're going to need one of those Willow Dollar Tree wreaths and two loops of nautical rope. So I just hot glued the first piece of nautical rope and then I'm going to hot glue again. So basically I'm just finding little spaces in the Willow wreath to kind of hot glue. I really wanted this to be just a little bit sporadic so as I worked I just kind of found different spots in the willow wreath and then added a little bit of hot glue and another piece of nautical rope so just continue to glue your nautical rope in and around your wreath again I wanted it to look very relaxed beach vibes beach decor is very casual very relaxed so I tried to kind of do it in a little bit of a loopy style just kind of you know, just gathering it and winding it around and hot gluing it and then gathering it some more. So this project was really inexpensive. You Then you can go ahead and glue starfish or seashells. I had found a little thing of seashells for 50 cents at the thrift store, but Dollar Tree also carries seashells. So you're just going to hot glue your seashells on. The Nautica rope nautical rope was helpful because it gave my um, seashells kind of something to adhere to so and there you have it you have a really beautiful beachy wreath of course I did have to go in and add a bow you guys know me I love my bows but just continue to glue those pretty beachy themed items onto your wreath and you're having a very cute very relaxed and oh so natural beachy wreath
As promised, I could not resist adding a bow. I'm just going in with some of that Dollar Tree wired burlap ribbon and I'm looping it up around the top. And I want to make this one a little bit longer. I'm just going to cut it off and then hot glue those two pieces together. And of course, you guys know I had to go a little bit extra. I could not resist. I tied a shoelace bow, which is just a very simple, very easy bow. And then I am dovetailing those ends to give it that boutique gorgeous finish. And then I'm just going to hot glue that to the top of my little hanger. Again, I saw a wreath similar to this on the Pottery Barn website. It was about $89. Of course, it did have quite a few more seashells but I'm just using what I have for this project. I think it would be beautiful to add some starfish or more seashells or as I said before you can leave it very relaxed and very simple and I think it's looking so cute and so perfect and with this darling little beachy theme it makes me so ready to go on vacation. I need to go tomorrow. Do you guys want to come? Really, wouldn't it be fun to be going to the beach? I actually am going to be going to the beach this summer, so I'm getting even double excited doing these DIYs, and I hope you guys are loving them. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take some of those cute little Dollar Tree they're just little statue things, um, decor pieces, and they had a gold base. And so what I wanted to do was I mixed up just a little bit of white paint with a tiny bit of brown paint. You could also use gray paint, but I basically just wanted to dry brush those on. And so to dry brush it on, I just put a tiny bit of paint on my paintbrush and then just gently go around the top of it. And then I'm taking a piece of paper towel and I'm wiping a lot of the paint off. I did like the gold paint and I kind of wanted it to show through but I wanted it to be a little bit more beachy like maybe it was a bit weathered and it had been sitting out in the sun so it was not hard to do with this I just brushed that white paint on these painted very easily and voila I had a really cute little decor piece and it didn't look so bright and shiny new now if you guys are going for a glam theme you could also add in you know some beautiful rhinestones or if you're going farmhouse you could customize this with a gray base paint or just whatever suits your fancy maybe you're doing shabby chic beach and you want to do some aqua on the base of these I also took my one of them and I put them on top of one of those Dollar Tree candlesticks to give it some height so I didn't glue it on but you could definitely do that as another part of this DIY to give these decor pieces some height so I just arranged them once I was finished and let them all dry I arranged them in this cute little kind of beach setting scene on a beautiful little tray with some Dollar Tree candles and I'm really loving this. It just came out so beautiful and so perfect and so beachy. I am so loving this, you guys. I don't know, I guess just something for a change, something to give me something to look forward to for the summertime as well. So for the next Adelia Tree DIY, we're going to create a really cute little beach sign. So I'm just taking some of these cute little polka dot letters. You find these in the teacher section and they're like kind of like a heavy cardstock, I guess you would say. They're not even really that heavy duty, but they're already done letters. And so I was like, heck yeah. So anyway, I'm just taking a piece of Dollar Tree poster board and I'm cutting it to fit where I feel like my letters will go. I wanted kind of a bigger size beach sign and I wanted it to also look like it was kind of rough wood. So I'm just taking and I'm cutting little triangles out of the end of my piece of poster board to hopefully kind of create that rough wood beachy sign thing that you would see, you know, in a home decor store, you would see like a really cool wooden sign that says beach on it. Wow, this one's going to be cool and beachy and faux wooden, but it's going to be a fraction of the cost. So now that I have my little beach, um, 
little wooden things cut out on the end. I'm going to take some of that Dollar Tree wooden contact paper and I'm just cutting it to fit. And then I did cut it a little bit long on each end. That way I could just go back in and cut the contact paper away from the little ends on my side. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just smoothing it down. And also with the contact paper, if you get a bubble in it, you can just kind of pull it back up and um, back down and then smooth it out. So now I'm just taking a hot glue gun and I'm hot gluing my little beach letters on. Again, you can find these letters in the teacher section. I know they're used for teacher boards, but I thought they were great. I'm not great at doing letters, which you guys could definitely stencil something really cool on this, but this made this project go really fast. So I'm just poking some holes in the top of my beach sign now because I do want to give it a hanger and I'm going to pull through the top and this is just that Dollar Tree nautical rope I'm just going to tie a knot in the end and that way it looks really coastal and beachy and casual and cool and it also has a neat little hanger to hang from the wall I think this would be great art for a teen girl's bedroom or even a guy's bedroom you could use different color letters I know they had some navy blue letters and just really all different colors in there so here it is hanging from my beach vibe door with the aqua color I think it looks really cute I was excited actually to have this yellow pop of color and with this beach theme, I feel like um, the citrus lemons that I added in with the Dollar Tree DIYs also is going to bring some of that pop of color. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're just going to take a Dollar Tree LED candle. And again, I'm going in with a nautical rope and I am just hot gluing the nautical rope around this candle. I didn't hot glue it actually to the candle because I was able to just loop it around and hot glue it end to end and then just kind of continue to wrap it. I wrapped it about halfway up and then I did cut it again and then I just hot glued that piece to the top so there was one side of the candle that had a little bit of an uneven kind of rough edge which again didn't bother me because I want this to be very casual and very beach chic and cool Voila, there we have it, a very beautiful beach candle. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you all how I made this tall glass candlestick holder. This also is a Pottery Barn inspired piece. I've admired this tall glass candlestick holder for a while, but I think they're on there for about $39. We're just taking one of those tall cylinder Dollar Tree vases and I'm using some E6000 glue. And then you can see I'm going in also with a little bit of hot glue and I'm taking one of my old um, Bath and Body Works candles that I had cleaned out. I showed you that in the last DIY, how to clean those candles out. Then I'm going in with this part of the DIY with some of that Dollar Tree sand after I had given it time to cure. And this really, guys, the sky is the limit on what kind of little vignette that you want to set up with this. Of course, I did want to add that candle. The Dollar Tree candle fit perfectly into the Bath and Body Works old jar. Just an FYI, if you guys have any of those Bath and Body Works um, candle jars laying around. Now, for the next Dollar Tree DIY, this one's super simple. All I'm doing is going in with a white bowl from the Dollar Tree and some of those Dollar Tree lemons. And voila, you have a very summer, very beachy vibe. And these little Dollar Tree DIYs over here, I just used some of that Dollar Tree sand and a, Dollar, a real Dollar Tree candle to kind of just, again, give it some beach vibe. And then the Dollar Tree marble little glass candles that they're showing right now that they have out, grab some of those because they smell delicious. So here it is, a little close up with all my glow. I love having a little spot set up with candles. I think this would make a great coastal centerpiece. I also think it would be excellent to put on a coffee table and a little side table or an itchy table just for some of those summer coastal beachy vibes. So I'm really digging this one, you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. So fun and I'm so thankful that you guys have been asking me to do these because it made me want to redecorate my whole house in a coastal chic fashion. Who knows? It might happen. <laughs> I love you guys, and I'm so thankful and blessed you're here. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how I created this really beautiful 
outdoor oversized planter Easter basket using a Dollar Tree laundry basket. So the first step was to enlist the help of Mr. Romantic to haul this giant pot in. I had it left over from last season during the summer and I had planted fresh flowers in it and I knew I wanted to park up the outside. So he was pretty much wondering what I was up to with this. So he moved it inside for me and I realized that the laundry basket was not going to sit down inside of the pot like I was hoping. And so I had to I had to trim off the bottom of the basket. So you're going to cut off the entire bottom of the laundry basket and for reference the size of my gardening pot was about 18 inches across. So then I decided to also cut off the top row including the handle top part of the laundry basket I knew I wanted to just dip that inside of there and then use the top handle to create my Easter basket handle. So just take your scissors and begin to trim off all those little pesky rungs in and around the top part of what is going to become your Easter basket handle. I decided to go ahead and cut this spot on the basket hoping that that would make these little tabs come off easier and it really did so definitely do that first if you're taking these tabs off and then I did cut off about nine inches of the handle so it would fit better down into my basket and now I'm just painting this white pot with some homemade chalk paint I use a cup of regular latex paint and half a cup of baking soda it's great homemade chalk paint to use Use on craft projects. Now this planter probably will be under a covered porch area so I didn't worry about sealing it and also it doesn't bother me if my planters get a little chippy and worn. Now I'm just taking and I'm running a pipe cleaner through my handle and tying it on to that first row on my little bottom part of my laundry basket. And then I went ahead and set it down inside of the planter to do the second handle to really see um, how far down I needed to go with my handle. And it was holding on pretty well with just a pipe cleaner in the bottom part of the planter. But then I decided to go ahead and use one more pipe cleaner and just wrap that around the top layer or the top row of that plastic part of the basket. That way it made it just a little bit more secure. I didn't want my basket, Easter basket handle to be flopping over. So that worked perfectly. Again, you guys can size this to whatever planter that you have. I know Dollar Tree sells little planters. They're not quite this large, so you would definitely want to make your basket handle shorter. But for an oversized outdoor planter, this really worked perfectly. And look how adorable this is, you guys. I am so excited. I've been wanting to make one of these oversized Easter baskets forever. And I was definitely feeling some spring vibes. I had this dirt left over from last season from some of my petunias. I went ahead and used real dirt because this is going to go outside. And I am hoping that once spring gets here and the temperatures are not getting down way below freezing I can put some real flowers and greenery in these pots but right now I just want to make something really cheerful for my front entryway I want to make it look really high-end as if this was something you know that I bought at a floral florist shop so I think right now it's looking pretty cute I love the white on white very fresh and festive for spring So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to create some egg picks. I'm thinking I'm going to use these in my planter, so I'm just taking some of those sparkling Dollar Tree eggs. They're foam on the inside, so you can easily poke some shish kebab skewers into the bottom of them. And I did kind of go on the other side of where the little holes already were on them. 
and you could also reinforce these with some glue if you wanted them to stay. Now I'm always changing things around so I just pop them into the styrofoam. Now over the weekend my daughter and I went thrifting and I picked up this greenery for $2.50. I was really excited to find this so I poked that into the side part of my planter. Dollar Tree also carries some really nice greenery and then I'm using that Dollar Tree Easter greeting sign. I just cut the top part off that had the little hanger on it and then I kind of settled it down into the center of the greenery that way it would stand up. I did end up going back in and putting the bottom part of the laundry basket underneath the Easter greeting sign and that kind of made it rise up above the dirt to where it wasn't sitting down inside the dirt. And now I'm adding in some of these sparkling Easter eggs. I just kind of played with this. I didn't want to cover up the Easter greeting sign so I moved the green one over to the side. Then I decided to fill the holes in the top part with these little tacks. These are some vintage tacks that I had out in the garage. The holes are fine to be on there, but I'm just thinking that that would kind of dress this top part of the sign up and make it look less like a sign that had the hanger cut off. So I'm just hot gluing the little vintage tack into the top part. You guys could also add a button. They sell buttons at Dollar Tree or just whatever little detail you want, or you could just leave it as is, or even add a bow to the top. Um, I thought this came out really adorable. And then I'm using some of that Dollar Tree Raffia, and I just tied a bow with it. And then I'm using some green ribbon to tie it on to the side of my basket. I really love adding bows, but because this is going to be outside and we are still getting a lot of wind and weather, I decided just to use this raffia. I think once spring begins to roll around and I find some really beautiful ribbon, I would like to add an even bigger and fluffier bow. But for right now, this is what I had on hand. And then I decided to go a little bit extra and add in this cute little Dollar Tree Daisy and this little taller Dollar Tree White Flower. I also had a couple of Dollar Tree Lilacs. Now these were all left over from that Easter wreath that I did and I will have that linked down below if you guys want to check that out. I had a little bit more of that thrift store greenery so I'm adding that into the front part of the basket and I did go into the back part of the basket and add a little bit of the, Dollar, or of the thrift store greenery as well. I felt like that really filled it out and this greenery was fairly realistic. I think you can find greenery like this at Dollar Tree or it might be more cost effective to look for it at Hobby Lobby or Michaels and then use a coupon code where you can get like a little bundle. And so here it is on my front porch. If you can see right there, that's where I added in the bottom part of the little laundry basket just to get the Easter greeting sign to kind of set up. And you guys comment and let me know if you have any questions about this. But look at how adorable this is. Oh my goodness. And then remember those Dollar Tree eggs that have the little stakes in the bottom? I went ahead and added that to the back of the Easter greeting sign. I just pushed the stake into the dirt. I added one facing out and then I added one facing the other direction. So they're both kind of in there together. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just going to create a cute little vignette in my little bunny planter here. I wanted to use some of those Dollar Tree eggs and I went ahead and left them with their little ribbons on there. I want to see, hopefully, they'll hold up to some of the weather out here. Otherwise, I need to figure out how to tie them to the bunny. I added in some of those Dollar Tree moss stones and then some little rocks. I'm hoping the rocks will kind of hold everything down. But again, if not, I may have to figure something else out because we have been getting some really wild wind. I actually even had to take everything out of my little bike out front and bring it inside because it was definitely about to blow away. So hopefully this is a little bit closer though. It's underneath my porch and it's kind of a little bit more protected. So hopefully it will all stay in place. I'm really, really, really thrilled. I have never tried this before, but I feel like it looks very, very high end. And we did this 
on a teeny tiny budget. Also, I just wanted to let you guys know I've seen large planters at Walmart for very inexpensive. And so I hope you guys are able to recreate this. It brought me so much joy having this by my front door. And then Tinky, she had to get into the video here. She has her little food bowl underneath this planter area. And so she's having a little snack. She has food bowls, I think, sprinkled in and around all of our little spots. But here it is. I hope you guys are loving this. So for the next DIY, I found this beautiful bunny art on the Pottery Barn website. It was $800 and it was a very large oversized piece of wall art. So I decided to create something on a smaller scale using Dollar Tree products. I have this 8x10 Dollar Tree frame that I'm going to take the glass picture out of. And then I went on Graphics Fairy. It is a website that I'll link down below. They have free printables and they have vintage bunny rabbits. So if you all need some really cute little printables, go to the, the graphics fairy again, and I will leave that link down below. But I'm just taking and painting my frame white. I painted in and around the entire frame with my homemade chalk paint. And I wanted to get all the sides and the front part really well. Now I only did one coat, but you could definitely do two. It didn't matter to me though, really, if it was gonna be a little bit distressed. And then I'm taking a little bit of black apple barrel craft paint, and I'm kind of dry brushing in and around the entire frame to kind of give it that vintage weathered look. And then I'm taking my little graphics fairy art printable that I printed out. I just printed this on regular computer paper and I'm gonna go ahead and replace the glass and put that back inside the frame. Also, I did give this about an hour to dry to make sure it was nice and dry. And then I'm just replacing the backing and pushing the tabs back in. And I am really excited for this. Now, obviously it's not as fancy as the Pottery Barn picture, but it cost me about a dollar, you guys. Um, I already have the paint on hand, and so I think it looks really lovely with that bless sign that we DIY'd. And I'm just loving this. I did a lot of French farmhouse in my dining room, living room area, and so this little bunny art just came out absolutely adorable. I was so excited for it, and I love how budget-friendly it is. And I also really completely respect the beautiful art that is on the Pottery Barn website. But I do love to show you guys how we can recreate this on a teeny tiny budget. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to create a really cute little shabby chic Easter Bunny pillow. I am just using one of those Dollar Tree wreath forms and I'm going to trace around the entire bunny form to get the shape of my pillow. So I'm just tracing in and around the entire bunny on this old shirt that was no longer used that had a couple stains on it and then I am going to cut that out. I went for pink on the front of my bunny pillow and then I had saved some of that curtain that we used in that trash to treasure DIY project on another project and I cut out this same shape to use on the back of my bunny pillow. Now I'm just gluing the edges of the bunny pillow to the pink part of the fabric to the linen part of the fabric. So I'm gluing really closely to the edges, trying to make sure that I get it glued together, but that I leave plenty of room to stuff my bunny pillow. Now there's two ways you guys can do this. 
You can turn it inside out to give it a clean edge, or you can just leave it like this and stuff it, and it won't have as clean of a sewn edge, but you'll have a bigger bunny, and it's probably going to be less work to not turn it inside out. So I'm just gluing in and around the bunny pillow, but I did leave the bottom part open so I had room to stuff the bunny with some fluff. So then I went ahead and turned my bunny pillow inside out. The ears were pretty tricky to work with, so I had to use a pen to kind of push the little ear part out. Again, this is where you guys may just want to leave it with the rougher edges. And now I'm just pushing the stuffing in, and I did have to use that same pen to get the stuffing into the ends of the ears. Now, this was a little bit of a shabby chic bunny, you guys, and it's the first time I've ever tried this, so bear with me. But I did want to create a really cute little Easter festive pillow. I did have to make a little repair there at the neck, but any hoozy doozy. So then once I got plenty of stuffing in, I did just tuck my edges under of the bunny and hot glue them together. Now I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree ribbon. You can find this pink polka dot ribbon in the baby section and I'm just making a teeny tiny Olivia bow with two loops. So I just folded the ribbon over on itself. I took a pipe cleaner and twisted it on and then I'm going to go ahead and add a dab of hot glue and then I used some of that Dollar Tree twine and reinforced the bow by, by tying a little bit of twine on and then I did have some scrap of other ribbon left over that I added into the center part of my little bow and then I added one of those Dollar Tree pink buttons and I think she came out really adorable. She's definitely a shabby chic bunny. She kind of reminds me a little bit maybe of the Velveteen Rabbit. <laughs> maybe shabby with a lot of love. Not the perfect bunny pillow, you guys, but still pretty adorable. I did add some trim to the bottom because my bottom edge wasn't that great. And I think she just came out absolutely perfect. She goes perfectly as well with that little heart pillow that we made in one of those last DIYs. So for our next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to make a beautiful pipe cleaner flower. So I'm starting by twisting from the middle. And then I'm going to start forming the petals by looping them over and then back into the middle. And I'm going to be doing that four times. And I'm just like shape shaping them so that they're circular and round and the shape that I desire. And then once I did the last loop, I just loop it back down to the bottom and I'm hot gluing the pipe cleaner to the middle so that it will be really secure. And make sure that when you're hot gluing, you hot glue from the back, whichever side you want to be from the back so you can't see it from the front. And now I'm just hot gluing the stem to the back of the flower. And then I'm going to twist the stem into like a little loop-de-loop -loop thing and make it the size I want. And then I've got a pink marker, a yellow marker, and a green marker so that I can color in my pipe cleaner. You can color it whatever colors you want, but I chose to do pink, yellow, and green. So now we are taking a photo frame thingy and taking it out of the frame and hot gluing a piece of fabric onto the front of the inside of the photo frame and I'm just doing that on all four sides lifting 
the fabric of hot gluing and then putting it back down. Now we put the frame back on and we're going to glue these pretty little flowers onto it and I'm just trying to figure out the place I want them and then I just take them from the back, hot glue a little into the middle and then press it on and I'm doing that with each one as I go and I'm tilting the ones on the outside to make it look like so so the center one is like fancy <laughs> So here is the beautiful floral art. I'm absolutely love it, loving this. It's going right by my kitchen sink to bring a lift to my day. And then we decided to go ahead and bake these Betty Crocker Supreme Fudge Brownies. Um, I'm going to pour the dry mix, isn't it? We started out with the dry mix and we put the dry mix in and um, then we added water one third, one fourth cup. One fourth cup of water. We used one egg. And I believe it was a third cup of vegetable oil, but we used butter because that was what we had on hand. And we think that butter makes everything better. It makes everything better. <laughs> so Alyssa is stirring up the brownie mix really well. And then we're adding it to our brownie pan. These brownies came with a little fudge packet. We also used a really large brownie pan, so the brownies yeah. were a bit thin, but they came out so came out really delicious. Good. We made them about two hours ago, and I think half the pan is already it's gone. It's already gone. Yeah. No, more than half. And now it's more like than half, because the boys came home. Daddy and the boys came home, and so they've been eating a lot of brownies. And here it is. Super delicious. Definitely highly recommend this. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to go shopping Perhaps. now. And I'm going to share with you all how to create a beautiful, elegant tablescape using items from the Dollar Tree. We can create a beautiful home on a teeny tiny budget. It does not have to cost a ton to entertain, to make your family feel like there is a festive brunch or lunch or dinner happening. It's just so fun to bring some really fun whimsical elements into your home, especially for spring. So for this tablescape, I really did a lot of very pastel decor. I think that's just such a fun way to approach spring, Easter. You can apply this to bridal showers, baby showers, just whatever suits your fancy, or maybe you're just in the mood for some fun. So without further ado, plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a really cute little burlap basket that I'm going to use as a napkin kind of hostess basket for my table. So I saw these really cute burlap baskets on the Pottery Barn website. They start out at about $29 and I knew we could create one for a fraction of the cost. So I'm taking one of those little black wire baskets from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to push this piece of burlap fabric down into it. Now I already had this on hand. I believe I got this from burlapfabric.com. I have a $5 off coupon if you guys want a discount on their little website and you wanted to order from them, but you could find burlap fabric at Dollar Tree, you can find it at Walmart. So you're just going to kind of cut it to fit down into your basket. Now I didn't want this to look perfect because the one on Pottery Barn was very rustic, so I'm just taking the hot glue and I'm going underneath the basket and just adding some dabs of hot glue to the wire. Be careful that you don't burn your fingers in the process. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I think I hot glued about five or six spots and I did get a little bit impatient. So definitely hold it down long enough to where it doesn't pop back up. So once I had it all the way trimmed around, I decided I needed to go a little bit extra. And so I used some of that Dollar Tree nautical rope and I just hot glued the piece of nautical rope to the base of my basket. And my idea was to give it a little bit more of a custom edge. So I'm just winding it around the basket handle about three or four times and then I'm hot gluing it as I go so I wind it around and then hot glue it to the basket handle and you kind of have to hang on to the rope the entire time as you're going and um, so you don't let it unravel but that's why I go ahead and hot glue it about three or four times as I loop it around
Once I got to the other side of my basket, I just trimmed off the extra rope and kind of curled it around the base. And then in my last video, I shared with you guys a Dollar Tree haul. Dollar Tree has some really cute napkins. I found some in the wedding section, some in the Easter spring section. So I just wanted to have some on hand. I added them to the basket and then some of those really cute Dollar Tree straws. Pick those up. They have them in the container organizing section at my store. And they come 24 to a pack, which is a super amazing deal if you're going to be having any spring or summer events coming up. And plus, they're just really fun to decorate with. I know my kiddos love them and my nieces love them when they come over. They like to use them in their hot cocoa. So anyway, for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm also really excited to share with you guys something out of my last haul. And that was those amazing Dollar Tree marble plates. So we're going to create a really beautiful two-tiered marble cake stand. Now you guys could use this for jewelry, you could use this for cakes, just whatever suits your fancy, but these are super inexpensive and fun to play with. So you're going to need three Dollar Tree candlesticks and two of the faux marble plates, some E6000 glue, and just a bit of patience. So I'm going in with my E6000 glue and I'm going in and around the top part of the candlestick and I'm about to the end of this E6000 glue so it took a little bit of maneuvering but just note to self too always put your E6000 glue on between uses because it has a tendency to kind of go like push out anyway long story short you guys keep going I did add some hot glue in and around this as well and you just want to hot glue your candlesticks on either end of each other and then I'm adding some more to the top base of this because I'm then going to flip this over to make the base of my stand. I played around with different things besides candlesticks and really the candlesticks in my opinion are going to be the sturdiest but let me know if you guys have found anything else to make these little cake stands with that you enjoy as well. So now I'm going in with the last step and this is the E6000 glue again at the top. I did add some hot glue so it would go ahead and dry as I was working because the E6000 glue does take time to set up and also note to self, peel off your stickers before you start your projects. So now I'm just finding the center of my little candlestick base and then I'm going in and I went ahead and added one more to the top. I didn't glue this one down because I want to do something different if I want to change this out. But I added this little crystal, it's four candlesticks. I can't remember what they're called, but I'm going to try to look for them in my Amazon um, and link them in my Amazon store so you guys can find these. But basically they're just like have these little crystals that hang down and they make things look really pretty. <laughs> and so I just added that to the top to kind of finish it off. And then of course my very favorite faux cakes from Rhonda's Rose Cottage Designs. I couldn't resist those, but you guys could use any sweet treats that you adore. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to decoupage some of those Dollar Tree LED candles. I love their LED candles. They're so fun to play with. They're so inexpensive and easy to use. So I'm just taking that Dollar Tree napkin and I'm trimming off the top part. There were four layers in this and you want to go down to just one layer. That's how I did my decoupage for this project. So I'm just finding that very last layer and I'm trimming it off. And I used the entire part of that napkin and I just kind of wrapped it around. And then I'm going to get my glue out and begin gluing away. So I usually go down with a layer of glue first and then begin to wrap my napkin in and around where that glue is and then add some glue over the top of that. So I love using the Dollar Tree Mod Podge. It's super inexpensive. It's so fun to use and just great for some really cute little crafty projects. Now do be careful when you're Mod Podging with napkins. If you're a pro Mod Podger out there, 
you guys know this, but it's very easy to tear the napkin. I did tear a little bit at the bottom of my project, but no worries, that's nothing. Just a bit of glitter and a little bit of ribbon cannot fix. So continue to go ahead and Mod Podge your candle and your napkin up to the top. And then once I got to the top, I just trimmed off the excess with my scissors. And then I did add a little bit more glue to kind of get the napkin to kind of move over where that rough edge was. I hope that makes sense. And then once I got a nice layer of glue on there, I went in with my favorite sparkles and glitter and I glittered and glitzed it to town. So this is just some larger kind of chunky glitter. I believe my aunt sent this to me um, and they do have this at Walmart. It was in a different package. I actually have this mixed with another glitter. I'm a glitter saver. Anyway, so there it is, all sparkly and absolutely fabulous. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just using some ribbon that I found at the thrift store. And this is another one of those LED candles. I only glue things to LED candles, just in case there are kids that are watching this. A regular candle, don't glue things to. Just leave it as is. Anyway, so I just took the ribbon and I wrapped it around the base. And then where the ribbon met the other end of the ribbon, I just hot glued it on. And... Then I went in with some of that Dollar Tree pink satin ribbon. It had little pretty cool polka dots, but you guys look in your craft stash. You may have some really pretty spring ribbon. I did pick up the lime green ribbon at the thrift store for 15 cents. So check your thrift stores too for ribbon. I know mine always has a couple cute ones here and there if I'm hunting long enough. So I'm also finishing this off where my little edges were, where you could see the cuts. This part is optional and you can just take a piece of fabric and glue over that and that way you don't have a rough edge and there it is I wanted it to match my decoupage candle but not be perfectly matching if that makes sense so I also did wrap my decoupage candle with the ribbon on the base and then that pink ribbon over it remember I did have a little bit of a mess up on the bottom of my candle so Again, nothing a little glitter can't fix. Now I want to make some customized napkin rings. So this is the next Dollar Tree DIY, and we're going to take some of those Dollar Tree napkin rings. They come six to a pack, and then these little paper bows come in the party section. So you're just going to hot glue your paper bow onto your napkin ring. Be careful when you're removing those paper bows because they're kind of hot glued to the cardboard, and they have a tendency to tear if you pull them off too hard. So very gently remove your little paper bow and then just hot glue it down. And then I also hot glued the little edges of the ribbon down. So about three little places. Anyway, I also want to let you guys know you can take some of that um, Dollar Tree jeweled kind of ribbon, as you can see this gold, and customize this napkin ring even more if you want it to go super glitzy and glam or maybe you're doing this for a bridal shower or a baby shower and you want to customize it with whatever colors are in your wedding or your baby shower that's another fun thing you can do for this one I wanted to leave it white just to keep it kind of simple so it doesn't compete with my flowery napkin so I'm setting the table with a Dollar Tree placemat this is from Dollar Tree a Dollar Tree charger that Dollar Tree faux marble plate. I did end up layering another white plate on top of that one, which they do have at Dollar Tree white plates. And then I just took my napkin ring. I pulled this linen napkin through. I found these linen napkins at my thrift store for 15 cents. So hunt at your thrift stores for napkins. And then I just pulled through that really pretty little decorative springtime napkin. And I think this is on point. If you guys are decorating for a fancy table, I think we're nailing it on this one, you guys. Really, I'm so excited to share these with you. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're just going to create a really super easy little bunny picture frame. You're just going to take a 4 by 6 picture frame from the Dollar Tree and frame it in one of those frames that has the matting already in it. I believe this actually was supposed to be a money holder, but voila, we have a beautiful and customized piece of art. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to make some beautiful customized floral arrangements. So I'm just taking these old candle bases and I put them in the freezer. And if you let them freeze for a day or so and then the 
candle wax will actually pop out really good. And then I'm just using my favorite Mrs. Meyers dish soap. I do have a coupon down below if you guys need some yummy smelling cleaners. So I cleaned out my little candle bases because why spend money on flower bases if you don't have to? I'm also using some of this goof off to get the rest of that icky stuff off. So now I'm just going in with my Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm hot gluing a tiny dab and I just want to create a really stylish and very classy little short bouquet arrangement. So I want to do this because I like to have a shorter arrangement when I'm actually entertaining for my guests. So a lot of times I'll create really big, beautiful, tall arrangements and those are really nice until you can't see over your tall arrangements to see your guests. So I wanted to create some shorter ones to have a little bit more ambiance on my table. Anyway, I'm just tying a shoelace bow, which a shoelace bow is how you would tie your shoes with your pretty ribbon. And then you're going to hot glue that to the front of your little candle base. And then I'm taking some of those Dollar Tree hydrangeas and I'm just clipping them off and I'm leaving them just a little bit long so they'll kind of hang over. So I have about six, six come on each stem. And then I had this really big, beautiful, fluffy rose. I believe I got these at Michael's. They're a couple of dollars, but they're kind of a nice little splurge to give your table that absolute little extra wow factor. Or you could use some of the pretty Dollar Tree roses, whatever suits your fancy and whatever you have on hand. I am loving this. I think this looks so beautiful, so elegant, so soft, and it's very ready for Easter dinner. Okay, so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of those little Dollar Tree chocolate bunnies, and I just want to customize it with a very simple tie around its neck with a ribbon. I saw this in a magazine, and I thought, how easy and how sweet and how simple. So you just tie your pretty bow on, and then you can display this. You could actually use it on the table centerpiece with your plates. You could use this on your little charger over there. You could use it as a nameplate, just whatever suits your fancy again. But I think it came out so adorable, so customizable again to whatever colors you're using. I do have to share with you all how excited my daughter was when she came home to see this little display. I did give her permission to, to nibble on that chocolate bunny. So my chocolate bunny does not have ears anymore. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, this is a really fun, easy thing you can do as a table presentation. I just pop some of those little Dollar Tree pastel colored jelly beans into the bottom of their champagne glasses. Dollar Tree has faux champagne glasses. They come two for a dollar. They're plastic, but they look really cute. They're fun, easy, disposable. If you just need to toss them and don't have a lot of storage space or you're entertaining for a lot of people and you don't want to go out and buy a ton, but the little jelly beans look so adorable in there. And then the couple of little straws, you could add some punch and voila, you're ready for a fabulous Easter time. If your guest doesn't want the jelly beans in there, they could just pop them out onto a little side plate. And also, I gave you guys a little teaser of my cabinet. My mom blessed me with this set of white Limoges dishes. These are beautiful. They're antique. They're a bit mismatched, and some of them are a bit shabby, but you really can't tell. I was thrilled and over the moon to have something new and beautiful to, to display in my cabinet. So I did change out some of my dishes, and I moved my pretty bunny dishes into my kitchen. So I'm kind of working on redoing some spaces in my kitchen. I cannot wait to share that with you guys. I have so many DIYs. DIYs popping out of my head this week, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are thrilled. I hope you guys are in a crafty spirit and feeling inspired. I'm blessed to have you guys here and I hope you're having as much fun as well. Okay, you guys, here is my outfit of the day. I just have on this pink tunic shirt with some comfy black leggings and my snuggly scarf, some Walmart earrings, and I am set to be a crafty mama. Okay, you guys, this is how with this DIY. I'm gonna take this large oversized grapevine wreath, and my idea is to break it apart and make it into a garland. I also have 
three of these Dollar Tree greenery pieces and some Dollar Tree lemons. So you guys can get these bases at Walmart. This I found for free. It was at my mom's house. I think I'm getting ready to make a huge mess. So what I want to do is use my wire cutters and take this wreath apart. I'm just flipping off the piece of garland that's holding it together. So you just basically have to take that one large piece and wrap it in and around and take that part off. And then once you get that part off, you can take the garland and, or take the wreath and just gently pull the pieces apart. This did take a little bit of maneuvering. I've also been told that if you soak it in water overnight, that makes it much easier. Now I'm just wiping off the surface above this cabinet because I do know that this garland is going to make a bit of a mess. So here's the inspiration for my garland. It was this beautiful lemon garland that I saw that I wanted to recreate. So I'm taking my long piece of garland and it kind of winds in and around this top part of my cabinet and I just kind of gently pushed it on either side. And then now I'm taking those Dollar Tree um, garland pieces. These were three of the Dollar Tree greenery pieces and I just kind of wrapped it in and around the garland. If you wanted to make it secure you could always use wire to attach it. Also the Dollar Tree lemons are perfect for this project. You can just pull the end out and there's a little bit of styrofoam on that end and you just take a piece of wood from your garland and I just poked mine on. Again if you wanted it to be more secure you would probably want to add some hot glue but this garland isn't going anywhere and it's not a super super huge high traffic area. It'll just be for decor, decor purposes up here. So I think it'll be just fine. I continue to add several more lemons. And then I also had some Dollar Tree white florals that I wanted to add in and around the garland as well. I'm really excited for how this garland turned out. I think it brings a fresh pop of color to my kitchen. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create some wall art using a foam board from Dollar Tree. So I had a thrift store frame on hand that I had painted white. So I'm just cutting out this piece of foam board to fit inside of my frame. And I'm using a sharp craft knife. And I will tell you guys, if you use a level to cut against while you're cutting your foam board, it helps it not rough the foam board not ruffle. And now I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree plaid tablecloths and I'm just tracing out the piece of foam board to fit the size. Once I have the tablecloth traced out, I'm just going to cut out the piece of tablecloth. And what I want to do with this tablecloth is hot glue it on top of the foam board. And that way I have a backdrop for my little sign. I did notice that Joanna Gaines was on the Anthropology website and she had done some really neat plaid wall decor. So this was my inspiration for this one. Now I'm just hot gluing the tablecloth on top of the foam board but I do suggest going end to end instead of all the way around because that did make it a little bit tricky. Now I'm just measuring to see the right size to put my placemat in. So this is a Dollar Tree placemat. It says live love eat. I thought that would be perfect for my kitchen. It has a tiny hit of yellow and that cute little Frenchy farmhouse gray. So I'm just hot gluing a tiny dab on end to end and then it's in there and I was so over the moon thrilled for this piece of wall art. Basically it cost us about three dollars and then of course the cost of a frame but I'm really a thrift store hound when it comes to frames. I'm so excited for how this project is turning out. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY I wanted to create this bakery sign that I saw at Michael's craft store. So it was um, one of those kind of old enamel reproduction tin signs. So I'm just taking the other part of our foam board always recycle and reuse as much as you can and I love to do that you guys know I love to so I'm just taking some black apple barrel craft paint and I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree paint brushes and I'm just going along the edges with the paintbrush now this paintbrush was even kind of in bad shape so it even kind of left some rough edges but if you guys have ever seen any of those old enamel signs they're kind of a little bit rough so I was okay with it looking kind of rough and a little bit aged so I just went all the way around the edge of the foam board and then also I kind of curved in on either end and then I'm taking some of those Dollar Tree letters that we found these are next to the poster board section they're already done I'm so in love with these they went straight on to my little sign here and I did have to take them back up because I got the letters a little bit uneven but they weren't that hard even to take back up I just used a pair of tweezers to gently take them up so I didn't tear the letters so I wanted to 
spell out bakery. I thought that would be really sweet for my kitchen and it just fits so perfectly up here. And you guys too, if you wanted to, you could even go in and paint more of the trim like around the back and the sides. I wasn't super worried about that. I didn't think you could notice it that much, but I think this turned out perfect and so cute for kitchen decor. Now, the next thing I saw on the Anthropology website also were these cute baskets. They're kind of a two-toned ombre style basket. So I just wanted to take this Dollar Tree wire basket and I removed the handle and then I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree nautical rope. And what I'm doing is I'm just hot gluing the nautical rope to the base and then winding it along the wire basket and then hot gluing it as I go. So you're just going to continue to hot glue the nautical rope in and around the wire basket. Now I will tell you if you're using the wire basket, the hot glue is going to poke through. I was using this basket for display on top of my shelf and so I knew I wasn't going to be seen down inside of it. But if I do decide to bring it down, I'll probably line it with maybe some of that cute little tablecloth. So that's just a note to you guys for this project. If you didn't want it to poke through, you may want to choose a different style of basket. So once I got to the top, um, I ran out of nautical rope actually, but I did have this Dollar Tree burlap wired ribbon on hand. So I'm just taking it and I'm hot gluing it in around the top to give the basket more of a finished edge. I really wanted it to be finished all the way around the top. So it would be nice and smooth. So you're just going to continue to hot glue that. I even hot glued it over where the little handle parts were. You could also wrap your handles and put them back on if you wanted to have handles on your basket. So now I'm just trimming this off and then I'm going to hot glue that one little last piece and this part of the basket will be finished. So then once I had this finished, I just got out some white paint and what I wanted to do was go ahead and start painting the base of the basket. I also did go back in with some hot glue and make sure that those little edges were tucked under and so now I'm just adding some white paint to the base of the basket and it took about two coats. I didn't tape off the basket. I was okay with following the lines of the rope so I just kind of worked in and around the sides and then I ended up putting a paper towel down and um, to make sure that I just didn't get paint completely everywhere. But I continued to work the paint. And again, it wasn't really that hard to paint on the nautical rope. I've actually never done this kind of project before, but I thought it turned out really cute. And it was only a couple of dollars. I think on the anthropology website, these baskets were like 30 to $40. And we did it for so much cheaper. I'm loving that. You guys know how I love to save a buck. Also, I did let this basket sit outside in the sunshine and dry for a couple of hours before I added it to my cute little display. But it did fit perfectly up top. It just kind of nestled right down in that little darling piece of lemon garland. And I thought it turned out really great, you guys. I was so excited with this. I think it looks so fashionable and perfect for this space. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create an inspirational faux wood cutting board sign. So I'm taking two of the Dollar Tree dry erase boards. You will find these in the teacher section. And then I'm cutting off the end of one of the boards because I only want the top part to have the handle. I want to create this kind of wood faux cutting board. The next thing I'm doing is just taking a piece of sandpaper and just gently sanding off the raw edge on the end of my faux wooden cutting board. And now I'm taking a popsicle stick and just take a couple of these, whatever size is just fine. And I'm just hot gluing them to the back of my cutting board to stabilize this piece. So I glued three running up and down and then one on the back for some support. 
And then once I have that done, I cut some contact paper. This is the Dollar Tree wooden contact paper, and I am fitting it to size the piece of my cutting board. This was a fairly easy part. Now there was a little tiny line where the seams of the cutting boards met, but you really couldn't see it that much. And I'm also going to be adding one of those decals to the front. So I chose this love is patient, love is kind. I really love this saying. I showed this to you all in my haul from last Friday and it was not too hard to work with either. You can see that I got it into a spot where I wasn't for sure that I really wanted it so I'm just kind of maneuvering it around and laying it back down again and so I felt like that it was very easy to maneuver and um, it also kind of covered up a little bit of the bubbles that was in the contact paper. I try not to be too much of a perfectionist with my crafts because it might just steal the joy out of my crafting. But anyway, so now I'm adding the other part of this sign. And this would also be really beautiful on just a piece of clear window framed or, you know, just a clear frame. But I knew what I wanted for this space. And so I went for it with this faux cutting board. And I feel like it turned out pretty cute. So now I'm just adding a little piece of nautical rope to the top. And of course, I couldn't resist adding one of those Dollar Tree wired bows. I just tied it like a shoelace bow. Now this was a trash to treasure project where I painted a mirror with this frame it has kind of chalkboard paint in the background and I just added it to the little top part of this and I thought it was so sweet. So this is that space next to my coffee maker. This is where I need this reminder every day. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not boast. It does not envy and love never fails. And so I just love that saying. These are in the Dollar Tree um, wall art area if you guys need that saying or want to look for it there <laughs> but I felt like it fit perfectly in I wanted to add just a little touch of wood to my kitchen because as you guys can see there's a lot of whites in here so I just felt like that was the perfect touch for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're going to create a polka dot Olivia bow so to create Olivia bow you're going to take your wired ribbon and you're just going to wrap it over on itself so you can see I'm just continuing to loop the ribbon over on itself and I do that until I get three loops so you can just kind of of look there and see. So just take your ribbon, wrap it over on itself, and then find the center and kind of fold it so you know where your center is. And then take your scissors and just cut two tiny notches on either side of your ribbon. Once you have your notches cut, and be careful, do not cut them any larger than just tiny, tiny notches. You can take a piece of wire or string or whatever seats your fancy and tie a little spot in the center of your bow. So you just want to tie that bow in the center and then take your loops and pull them out and give them a bit of a fluffing. And then I always dovetail my end. So you just take the ribbon in half and then cut a little notch on the end. And that gives it that really beautiful boutique finish. I wanted to give this little bit of bow to the edge of my display over here. I thought it would add some whimsy and some fun. Um, you guys know how much I love bows and it was all I could do and not to get crazy with a floral up here, but I feel like this is really great for the kitchen. It's very simple and elegant and fun and springtime chic Frenchy farmhouse. We're ready to go to the bakery. We're ready to do some eating and all that fun stuff. So now I'm just taking two of those little Target dollar spot bunnies. These were $3 each and they were in the terracotta and I'm taking some white paint and I'm just brushing them with one coat of white paint and I kind of wanted to give them the appearance of being a concrete bunny so I took a little bit of that apple barrel craft paint that I had left over from the beginning of these projects and I'm just brushing some of the black craft paint on while that wet, wet paint was still wet and then I added a little bit of white paint back in and here they are they're so sweet and so cute and this was just such a simple thing to do I knew I'd be happy with them if they blended into this decor just a little bit more but they're so perfect ready for Easter and I think this is just so precious I added my little Dollar Tree Grace cross to the corner over here by our fruit with that little Dollar Tree 
um, tea candle. And then I found this really cute sign at the Dollar Tree. This gratitude is the best attitude. I love that sign. I think it would be a lot more in a more high end store, but here it is. I feel like this is such a sweet spot. I was so excited for this and I hope you guys are loving this too. Comment and let me know which is your favorite project with these DIYs and which ones you all might be recreating. I would love to hear your input and what you all are thinking on these. Okay, you guys, so here is my outfit of the day. I just have on this little lace top over a tank top and some fitted jeans. They're kind of like jeggings, I guess. I found this garage, this sweater at a garage sale. I was really excited. I also knotted the ends on it. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this really adorable garden wheelbarrow planter using items from the Dollar Tree. After we create the wheelbarrow garden planter, I'm also gonna share with you all how to create this beautiful spring Easter floral arrangement. You can also change out the seasonal decor. So this is gonna be a great little wheelbarrow garden planter especially if you love to decorate with kind of that farmhouse style. I'm gonna create kind of a French farmhouse floral for the inside. Of course, you guys can customize this to fit whatever kind of decor you love and how you're decorating for spring or Easter or into the rest of the holidays. So get ready, plug in those glue guns. This is gonna be a fun one. The supplies for this project are one of those Dollar Tree garden planters. I went ahead and painted mine white in advance for this project. And so you guys can use the Dollar Tree craft paint or you could use spray paint, whatever floats your boat and whatever you have on hand. And then I'm also using one empty ribbon roll and this Somebody Loves You sign. This part is optional. Also your hot glue gun, some craft knife and also some popsicle sticks. So to get started, you're going to take your garden planter and you're gonna cut two little notches in the back part of the planter. You're gonna cut them the size of a popsicle stick. So these are the smaller popsicle sticks. They come in a packet at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using my craft knife to poke a hole into the bottom part of the planter. Now you guys can see that it takes a couple of tries to get the hole poked. And then I also go ahead and flip it over and continue to kind of cut and wiggle that craft knife around. Now if kids, if you're doing this, please have your parents help you with this part because the little um, part that you're poking through where the metal is on this can be a bit sharp. So be very careful. Um, and so you're just gonna go ahead and poke two holes. This is gonna be where the back part of our wheelbarrow Barrow. popsicle sticks are going to go through. Again, I did have to kind of wiggle it around to get it cut, but it wasn't too hard. And then you can kind of test it out to see if your popsicle sticks will poke through. Now we're going to the front of our planter. So this is the other side. This is going to be the front part of our wheelbarrow, and you're going to cut two little notches in the front of this. And I kind of spaced them apart because this is where we're going to connect our wheel to. Now I cut mine sideways, but I do advise you to cut upwards if you can, because this made a little bit of an extra step where I had to glue extra popsicle sticks on to make the wheels hold on there. So once you have your holes cut for your back part and your popsicle sticks for your front, you're going to take your little empty spool for your wheel and you're gonna cut out the center. So if you use Dollar Tree um, ribbon spool, there's no ribbon left on this. I just took the ribbon off. Um, there should be a hole already in the center kind of that you can feel. So you'll just need to take your craft knife or you can use scissors for this and then cut the hole out. So I just kind of wiggled this around and continued to cut until I felt like I got a decent little hole. And I did this in the front and then I flipped it over and did it on the other side so I could kind of make myself a wheel. Now I will suggest to, after I get done with this project, it might help if you guys reinforced your wheel by cutting another strip of cardboard to put around it. I did notice that my wheel was just a little bit flimsy. So if you guys want it to be a little bit more sturdy, um, definitely try to reinforce it with some more cardboard. And then next, my daughter is going to help me with this craft project. And so we are just gonna paint all these popsicle sticks with the Apple Barrel craft paint. This is just a black. You could also do brown if you wanted your handles to appear more wooden, which is kind of what I did 
in the end, then I'll show you guys that. So I am painting the wheel with the black apple barrel craft paint. I did paint all the way on the front part of the wheel and then on the inside part of the cardboard. And then I went ahead and also helped her paint the little craft sticks. This was a bit of a tedious process. And I did think that I was going to make two of these, but it took me all day to make one. So I just went with two. And you can see she helped me. Her hands got all painted. And I love her thumbs up. I had no idea she did this, but it was really cute. Okay, so once you have your craft sticks painted and then give them a bit to dry, you can go ahead and poke them in. And this is what's going to make the back part of your wheelbarrow. So you're poking in two on each side so we poked two on one side and then we're turning it around and we're poking two on the other side and so get them poked in about the same length because you want it to kind of stand up evenly and then you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're just going to glue your little craft sticks together so you're going to add a dab of hot glue and then I held mine for just a minute or two and they seem to hot glue pretty good together. If you wanted to reinforce it even more, you could use some E6000, but I just use hot glue for mine. And again, I felt like they held together fairly well. So then once I had the legs to the back of my wheelbarrow glued together, I'm just going in with the little handles for the front and I'm pushing them through the front. And then I'm taking two little popsicle sticks that I cut in half and I'm making spokes for my wheels. You guys could definitely get more detailed and be creative with this part. I wanted my spokes to be rather large so the popsicle sticks could kind of fit on there. And you can see too where the paint is showing through. I didn't put on my second coat of paint until I after I got everything put together because I didn't want it to rub off while I was assembling the piece. Again, you guys could go ahead and do this how you choose. And now I'm just adding a little dab of glue to each end of the popsicle stick. And then when I glue the center spoke of my wheel on, I'm just adding one glue bob to the center and then now I have my darling little wheel. <laughs> I think this is coming out really really cute. It looks just a little bit rough right now but I promise you guys this is going to come together really adorable. So now that I have that done I did go ahead and push my little popsicle sticks further down because it seems that my wheel was a little bit too far out and then I have the little popsicle sticks on either end that I glued the opposite direction because I did have to glue them on because of the way that I put the original popsicle handle sticks on. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, basically glue your popsicle sticks on <laughs> to the front part for your wheel. and poking holes in the back of my planter and this is going to be for my wheelbarrow handles. Now I kind of wish that I had done this at the beginning so if you guys can remember to poke your holes in for your wheelbarrow handles ahead of time go ahead and do that and I just poked them on the end as you can see because I wanted my handles to stick out like it was a wheel, real wheelbarrow and now I'm just trimming off this little piece of tin from that Dollar Tree bunny sign because I wanted to add some tin to the legs of my little wheelbarrow because I did notice that um a real wheelbarrow would have like metal legs right here. Again, this part is definitely optional. I just went for this extra step because I had that extra tin from that sign on hand. So I'm just hot gluing it to my little popsicle sticks on the base. And then I decided to go ahead and add some black paint to this. I didn't want to completely cover up the paint. So I do go back in and wipe a little bit of paint off with a paper towel. But I am just going in with that black black craft paint. Again, I wanted this to appear kind of like vintage kind of farmhousey, like it really was being used outside. I know how my wheelbarrow looks and it looks kind of aged. So I wanted some of that metal to kind of poke through. And then I'm also going along the bottom part of my wheelbarrow and I do paint a rather thick line here. Um, because if you had like a regular wheelbarrow, this would part would be metal as well. 
and along the bottom part. Depending on what kind of wheelbarrow you have, actually there's so many different kinds of wheelbarrows, whether it be, you know, um, a metal wheelbarrow or a wooden wheelbarrow, just whatever floats your boat. Have fun making a gorgeous garden planter wheelbarrow. And now I'm going back over my wheels with some black paint. I went in and around the outside on the front part and the back side. And then I also touched up the little spots in and around the top part of my planner. So I'm just taking my paintbrush with just a dab of black craft paint and I'm going in and along the top. This doesn't have to be perfect because a wheelbarrow that's being used and a little bit aged doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I had originally painted this white and then distressed the front with a bit of sandpaper. I did decide to replace my wheelbarrow handles, the black ones, with some wooden ones. So I'm using some of that Dollar Tree contact paper that I had left over from another project, and I'm wrapping two popsicle sticks with the brown craft paper or contact paper I'm sorry um because I wanted it to appear like I had wooden handles on my wheelbarrow this is definitely an optional step and I was actually just going to use some brown craft paint but I remembered that I had saved <laughs> little craft hoarder I am I had saved some wood contact paper so I'm just using that and now I'm trimming off the edges So now I'm just replacing the black handles with the wooden ones. It did bunch up just a little bit where I poked the handles in, but I still thought it came out rather adorable. Now I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree brown wooden tower blocks and I'm hot gluing it to the front part of my wheelbarrow. This part is also optional. I did have these blocks left over from another project. I just thought it made it look kind of more wheelbarrow-y. <laughs> Definitely that's not a word, but anywho. Okay, so if you guys are like me and you're normally hauling around weeds and brush in your wheelbarrow, here is how you may want it to look if you're not gonna do an over-the-top floral. Of course, you guys know me and I have to go super extra, so I'm definitely gonna go for a floral. Now, I tried to do part of this floral arrangement outside of my wheelbarrow because I didn't want to be constantly pressing down with my little um, front wheel being a bit... Um, delicate let's say that so anyway I went ahead and added some greenery and Dollar Tree does carry some really nice greenery this time of year and then I'm adding in some of those Dollar Tree little Gerber daisies and I think this is coming out super adorable again you guys can stop here I wanted to add a little bit of color to this making it a very French farmhouse piece I'm using it as my centerpiece so I'm adding in some Dollar Tree lilacs and also a little bit of Dollar Tree lavender now I'm going in with one of those Dollar Tree Easter signs and I'm cutting off the little Easter bunny part. I'm using three shish kebabs and a piece of green felt. What I want to do is make a floral pick with this Easter bunny um, sign to put inside of my Dollar Tree floral garden wheelbarrow. So I'm adding hot glue to the back. I have those three shish kebabs. Um, added to the base and then I'm hot gluing a generous amount and then adding my little green felt on to the back and that is going to create a really nice floral pick and this is just a little tip if you guys are doing a floral arrangement this is a really great way to pick in a wooden sign or just whatever your heart desires to add to your floral I'm adding in that little vintage tack detail to the top again this step is completely optional I had actually not planned to add in this Easter sign but I couldn't resist getting super extra and so I had also popped over to the thrift store and found this really adorable ribbon for a quarter each and I'm using some of that Dollar Tree wired ribbon this is the chevron pattern with the burlap and I'm creating an Olivia bow so you just take your loops and wrap it over on itself I'm doing two loops for the base bow and then you crease it in the center you're going to take your scissors and cut a little notch now remember cut a, just a very tiny notch and this is what we're going to use to attach the bows together with your pipe cleaner so take a pipe cleaner and attach your bow and give it a good twist 
Now you can go ahead and fluff your bow if you choose. I love using wired ribbon because it really helps you fluff your bow. And then I'm going to do a triple layered Olivia bow right here. You guys use whatever you have on hand and customize this to whatever colors you love, but you're just going to loop it over on itself again. This time I did three loops and then again, you're going to fold it in half and then cut a little notch in the center. Remember a tiny bitty notch, otherwise your bow will fall apart. The notches help you guys fluff your bows. And then I did add some of that lime green ribbon with another Olivia bow to the back and some lime green ribbon to the front. My camera died, so I apologize. I didn't show you guys that part. And the way that I attached the bow to the little bunny sign was just with a pipe cleaner. And then I popped that bunny sign into the top part of my floral. And voila, here it is. It is so fantastic. My mom came over and she really raved on this project. She was really impressed. She really loves garden stuff. So she thought this was super adorable and very creative. And I was actually pretty excited myself. I really wanted something fantastic for the centerpiece for my table that just spelled out spring and Easter together. And I think this little project definitely nailed it. You guys comment and let me know if you're inspired to try something like this. I am really loving how it came out. And then also remember, you guys can just leave it very minimal with the brown grass or green grass. You can go with a couple of flowers or you can go crazy and make a giant arrangement at the top. Next, I'm going to make be making a pipe cleaner bunny. So first I am looping around the ear and then I'm twisting it so it's secure. Then I'm just going to repeat, repeat it. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to loop it over the top and bring it back down. And then I'm going to make a little circle for the head. This one's going to be a little bit smaller than the body. And then we're going to loop the pipe cleaner through the circle two times so that it's back down at the bottom so we can make the body. So now I'm going to loop the, the end of the pipe cleaner around back to the head and wrap it around the bottom of the head. Now we're going to make two little bows for the bunnies and so the first one I'm going to be hot gluing in between the ears and the head so it looks like it's got a cute little bow on top of its head. And the next bow I'm going to be gluing in between the head and the body and so it's a cute little boy, yeah. And then I'm going to be sticking him into the by the cakes on this cute old stand that my mom. A huge thank you to my daughter for joining me in this crafting session today with helping me paint and also creating these adorable little bunnies to go in with my fake cakes. And speaking of fake cakes, if you guys want to find where I buy my fake cakes, I buy them from Rhonda's Rose Cottage Designs. She does the most amazing designs. Her prices are really reasonable. Her work is so detailed and perfect. I know you guys are going to love her. And I hope you all are having fun with these spring crafts. Again, I have a ton of spring spring and Easter DIYs that I will link down below. You guys are amazing. Thank you for all of your love and support. I read all of your comments. For the first DIY, we're going to create a beautiful garland using strips of old fabric and leftover ribbons from other projects. So I just cut these strips of fabric into about 10 to 16 inch strips. It didn't really matter that they weren't all the perfect length because sometimes when you make a bow you have extra ribbons that are different lengths left over. I just tried to cut them to be around the same length and they also ended up being a little bit shabby as well. Now I'm just taking a piece of that Dollar Tree jute twine and I'm threading it through a really giant large needle and then I'm going to take it I'm just going to kind of loop it through the end of this piece of fabric and that way 
the fabrics that are a little bit thicker, like some of that Dollar Tree burlap lace that I have left over that has wire in it, I couldn't really tie that on to a garland. So I just want to take and I want to thread it through. So I'm just going to take each piece of leftover fabric. There's that Dollar Tree burlap lace I was talking about. So I'm just taking that piece of thread and pushing it through and then the jute twine fits perfectly through the laces and the different fabrics and if it was a bit difficult I just kind of pushed down into it and it was just fine. This is some piece of old um, ribbon left over from another project that I had. This is such a great way to recycle your really pretty fabrics or maybe you have a favorite shirt that has this beautiful pattern on it but it has a huge stain that you can't get out. Cut it up and use it and make a beautiful shabby chic garland or whatever kind of garland you fancy. So maybe you decorate in farmhouse blacks and whites. You guys could use some of your old scarves or just anything that suits your fancy. It's also a great way to upcycle and repurpose maybe a loved one's shirt or blanket. So I made a fairly large garland. This took me a bit of time, mainly with the cutting part. And then I had just tied my jute twine to the end of a chair and I sat on my sofa and I just took the little needle and thread and I just threaded each strip through. That way, if it was a different length, it wasn't that big of a deal or a different thickness. I didn't have to tie it on. I hope that makes sense. And here's how it turned out. Now, I hung it on this curtain in my dining room, so the light is shining through it, and the colors aren't completely true to how it looks. It's a little bit more pastel y, but these are also really great for birthday parties, baby showers. I've seen people use long strips and make wedding garland backdrops, so just get creative. I hope you guys are loving this, and this is such a fun way to repurpose and reuse some of your old fabrics and laces and trims left over from other projects. I can also go in if I want to make this shorter I can trim it down but again I wanted it to look kind of shabby chic and so I left it long and kind of fun and um, also leave room at the end of your twine to tie it off and leave those tails kind of long. That way if you want to space your garland out and make it a little bit bigger it slides because it's not tied on. So I hope that makes sense. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take four rolls of these deco mesh, two in pink, one in white, and one in purple, and I'm going to cut 10 inch strips. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and the deco mesh does fray a little tiny bit from Dollar Tree. If you wanted a better quality, you could always go to the craft stores, but I'm going to cut 10 inches long on each piece of deco mesh and then I'm going to gather it into a bundle of three. So I'm just going to take the mesh, I'm going to kind of pull it in and gather it. It kind of makes a little bit of a bow. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. I'm also using a clothespin. You could also use a chip clip to hold your mesh together. So just gather it again and then clip it down to the end and I'm going to make three little gathers and then this is what I'm going to call a bundle. And then once I have my bundle all together, I'm going to take a piece of pipe cleaner and I'm going to pipe cleaner those to these three together. So you just take your pipe cleaner and you're going to twist it two times in the back and that's going to give you a bundle. And this is what we're going to use to create our really beautiful Easter egg wreath. So here is the bundle. I have purple, white, and pink. I also did a couple that were just pink and white. So get creative. It doesn't have to be perfect again. Now I created 30 of these bundles of three. So there are three little ruffled loops that are tied together and I created 30 of these to fill up an entire clothes hanger. I wanted mine to be nice and full and this did take four rolls of the Dollar Tree Deco mesh. So what I like to do is cut all of my strips of deco mesh, then make my bundles, and then pile them all together. That's the easiest way to go to go about it. Definitely have a show or something on hand to stay entertained. Now I'm just taking a wire coat hanger and I'm pulling it out to kind of create my egg shape. So I pulled it out from the bottom and then kind of pushed it in just a little bit. This took a little bit of maneuvering, but really wasn't that hard. Now that I have my coat hanger shaped into a long oblong shape, I'm taking my bundle and I'm going to twist it on. So I'm just going to the end of my little hanger shape and I'm taking the pipe cleaner and I'm twisting it on twice 
to the bottom of the coat hanger. You could start at the top as well. I just chose to start at the bottom because I thought it would be easier to kind of slide them together. I'm also kind of alternating the pink bundles with the pink and white and purple bundles since I didn't have quite as much of the purple bundles. That way it kind of made it a little bit more even. Again, there's going to be so many bundles on here, you're really not going to completely notice how perfect it is. So this is such a great easy project. Again, the hardest part of this really is just doing the bundles, but then once you have that accomplished, voila, you have this big, beautiful, fluffy Easter egg shaped wreath that you can add whatever kind of lovely decor that you want to. So just continue to work up both sides of the clothes hanger, tying your bundles on. So take your bundle and twist it onto the back with two loops on the pipe cleaner. And then you're gonna have a lot of pipe cleaner left over on the back and you can go ahead and snip those off. Now that I'm up to the top, I'm just gonna add a bundle to the very top by where the hanger is. And I'm leaving the hanger on there. That way I can hang it up on the wreath and I don't have to have any kind of hanger. So I did add two bundles to the very top of my wreath as well. Now that I have all of my little deco mesh bundles tied on, I'm kind of playing around with what kind of sign I want to put on here. So I decided to go really festive and use this Dollar Tree sign that says Happy Easter. I'm just going to use the bunny head for this part and then add in a ribbon and a couple of eggs. So. I'm taking two pipe cleaners and kind of underneath where that bow is at the top of the bunny's ears, I'm adding two twists of the pipe cleaner to each side of the ears. And then I'm gonna use those pipe cleaners to tie the bunny into the center of my wreath. So once I have the pipe cleaners on, I'm just gonna kind of push the bundles aside. And this is down about the center part of the wreath. And then I'm gonna find where the hanger is and I'm just gonna twist those little pipe cleaners on and that's going to hold your little bunny head on fairly easy. Now you could still see kind of the pipe cleaner where the bow is, but I'm going to redo that bow on the top to where you can't see it. And there she is, super adorable and absolutely ready. You could of course stop here, but you know me, I have to get a little bit extra. I really decided that this bunny would be really cute too with a pink nose. So I used some of that super cheap craft paint from Walmart. It's in the pink peony. It's from Apple Barrel. And I'm just painting the little nose on my bunny pink just to kind of girl her up and glam her and make her perfect for this super adorable little deco mesh egg shaped wreath. that she has her nose all painted pink and ready for a fabulous Easter. I did paint those carrots off the side but decided not to use them. I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree pink ribbons and I'm making an Olivia bow. There's bow tutorials linked down below as well. You just take your ribbon and loop it over on itself. I did two loops and then I'm folding it in half. I'm finding the center. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a tiny notch on each side of the ribbon. Remember, very, very tiny notch, especially with sheer ribbon because it has a tendency to break apart very easily. And then I'm taking my pipe cleaner and I'm just gonna pipe cleaner, twist it twice in the back. And then we're gonna do two more bows to layer on top of this larger bow. So the sheer bow is gonna be at the bottom of the ribbon. And then I'm going in with this Dollar Tree Chevron. This was left over from my wheelbarrow project, which thank you guys so much for the love on that one. So I just did two loops with this ribbon as well. And now I'm notching it in the center and notch it just a little tiny bit. Again, don't cut all the way through your ribbon or it will break apart. So I'm taking the pipe cleaner and I'm adding two more twists and layering this black and burlap chevron on top of the pink sheer ribbon. I'm using what I have on hand. So I think it would have been nice to have had some purple, but I'm again, I'm using what I have. So the pink and white ribbon, you can also find at Dollar Tree. It is in their baby section, just an FYI on that. Now I'm doing one more Olivia bow, except for I'm not gonna notch the center of this. Um, this ribbon was a little bit difficult to work with because it had gotten smashed. It might have been me. It might have been Dollar Tree. I don't know. Anyway, I did three loops on that one and then I'm tying it on to the bow and then I'm just going to kind of fan them out. Again, the ribbon wasn't the best quality, but we're using what we've got and we're going to go for it. So now I just 
um, put the bow on with the pipe cleaner that was attaching the entire bow off to kind of, it would be the right hand side if you're looking at the wreath. So I kind of did it off center. You guys could place the bow in the center, whatever floats your boat really. There she is looking adorable and oh so festive with her cute little bow. Now I had a couple of pieces left over with that ribbon and so I just kind of made a quick messy loopy type bow. Again there's bow tutorials down below but I'm adding that kind of off center to the top on the left. You guys could also put this in the center top and bottom but I thought this was looking pretty cute. And then of course do not forget the most important part, fluffing your bows. For the crowning glory on our darling little bunny, I added a pink bow to the top. I also tied some of that jute twine into a big loopy bow and added that on top of the pink and white bow. And then I also added a really cute little tiny pink um, Dollar Tree button, but she's looking adorable. And then I had to get even more extra because this bunny needs some eggs to hide. So I'm going in with some of those Dollar Tree speckled eggs. I had a couple of pink ones and a couple of aqua ones laying around, so I'm using those. And then I even found a tiny little piece of blue ribbon that I added over to the side of the bottom bow. And here she is looking oh so beautiful, ready for a hippity hoppity Easter. I hope you guys are loving this. And again, don't forget, you can customize this to whatever decor that you love. So you could use all different colors of deco mesh. You could go for more of a carrot green. I thought this egg is so sweet and just perfect for mixing in with some of my French farmhouse decor. Now, I think I will actually use this one outside because I feel like deco mesh holds up really well outside and we've been having some crazy wind lately. So here she is. I hope you all are loving it and feeling ultra inspired. I did also add some of those little vintage tacks to the tops of her ears where the holes were from the hanger part of the sign. I had those on hand, you guys. You could also use little buttons or whatever baubles you have in your craft stash. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to use one of their little canvas signs. Now, I didn't actually use my Market Fresh sign, but I showed you guys that one because that's the size that I used. This was one of the Paris ones, and it didn't quite go in with my decor, and I really wanted some bunny decor for my kitchen. So, I painted over the sign with some white homemade chalk paint. To home make my chalk paint, I use one cup of regular paint to half a cup of baking soda. It's great for craft projects. So now I'm just using a little tiny dab of the black apple barrel craft paint and I'm creating kind of some little black stripes through here. I kind of want to give this that like farmhouse vibe, just mixing it up a little bit you guys for my kitchen because in my kitchen normally I have the farm fresh market sign but that's going to come down because I am decorating for Easter and comment and let me know if you guys want me to do an Easter home tour. So now I'm just taking that little bunny graphic. I showed you guys this in another project this graphic. This is from the graphicsfairy.com and I will link her site below. She has a lot of really cool vintage images that you guys can print out for free. So now I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm just Mod Podging the back of this. I had also distressed the edges of this using a lighter. I didn't show that part because I wasn't for sure that if a child saw that I didn't want them playing with a lighter. But you just take a lighter and you kind of go around the edge of your paper to give it that kind of distressed look. You could also coffee stain it. Um, or you could use a little bit of paint or marker around the edge of that. So I'm just going in and around the entire bunny now with some Mod Podge. And I did do two coats of the Mod Podge to make sure it was on there really well. And there she is. I think she looks absolutely adorable. Perfect for my little French farmhouse cottage kitchen. 
hippity hoppity Easter on its way. And even my mom was loving this one. So comment and let me know what you guys think. It goes really cute with this trash to treasure project that we did earlier. I do have that video a couple ones back if you guys wanted to see that. And there's that cute little garland we used, we made from the Dollar Tree treat sacks. So, oh my goodness, I'm so excited for Easter, you guys. I hope you guys are loving this and are super inspired to just create something festive and gorgeous for your home. I want to share with you guys how to make a super adorable little elevated planter. Now I'm using these little crates and the crates actually came from Target Dollar Spot. They were $5 for the pack and then I'm just using these little pieces of wood block that were extra wood pieces cut from my patio from last season. I'm taking my hot glue gun. You guys could also use wood glue but the hot glue is pretty quick and it holds pretty well. And I'm just going to hot glue little legs on these elevated planters. Now, I think these elevated planters are so fun and they're so much more expensive if you buy them at your home decor stores. So grab some crates and some little wood blocks and get to work. Okay, now I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to chalk paint some white chalk paint on these. Um, my idea for this season of decor is gonna be to start moving into some really fresh, clean kind of French country feel with a lot of my decor. But remember, you. You all can change this up to match your decor. You can stain it, you can paint it black, whatever colors you love. Now I'm taking this well-loved and well-used piece of Dollar Tree Styrofoam and I'm just going to pop that into the base of the planter and then using some of these Dollar Tree little greenery plants, I'm just gonna mix in some greenery and some fun lilac and lavender. Again, kind of giving it that fresh spring garden feel. And just remember, you guys can use whatever florals you have. These are just kind of some florals that I had on hand in my craft stash. Always check your craft stash first. If you guys are like me, you always think, gosh, I have nothing to craft with. And trust me, if you're a crafter, you have stuff to craft with. I know I do. Um, and so if I dig around first before I go, go out and buy a bunch of stuff, I can really repurpose and reuse things from last season, which is what you guys are probably going to notice if you've been around here for for a while um, that I do. I do a lot of repurposing and reusing. I feel like you can really have a boutique gorgeous on home on a budget. Now I wanted this to kind of look like, you know, those really expensive um, planters that you see with like a bunch of greenery and then pretty colorful plants that you see at the garden store. I kind of wanted to give it that vibe. And then I'm just using some Dollar Tree moss to kind of tuck in and around the base so you don't see that icky styrofoam. We don't want to see that. Um, and so then boom, we have a couple of fun little planters. Now Dollar Tree is going to carry these similar style crates. They're just a little bit smaller, um, but you could also use Jenga blocks for your legs on them. And I think I shared with you guys a DIY similar to this last year, but this is on a little bit of a bigger scale. So here is how it looks popped in to my new living room mirror and this cute little honey bunny. This bunny came from Tuesday morning and she is so adorable. She actually lights up. I need to pop off her little bottom and put some batteries in there so she'll light up and feel cozy and glowy at night. I'm just starting to really bring in some of my Easter decor into my living room. You guys comment down below and let me know if you have started sneaking Easter decor into your living room as well. I'm kind of done with Valentine's Day. That's been all put up and I am ready for some spring dreaming. This is day three of the snow that we had. We actually were able to get out today though, thankfully. So I hope you guys are staying cozy and warm no matter where you're at. And I hope you're inspired to create some fun spring decor. Now for this next dollar store DIY, I want to share with you guys how to create a super adorable little bird's nest. Okay, so I have shared with you guys so many different ways to create bird's nest. This is going to be created out of a little salsa container, but you can also use tin cans like um, a chicken of the sea can or just really any little container that's about the size of a bird's nest. And so whatever size you use with your container is going to be the size of your bird's nest. Now I'm just using this pretty little ribbon to go in and around the edge of the container. You could also paint it or leave it as is. Is I only had a certain amount of a little grass so I really didn't want the um, container to show through so you could use ribbon you could use um, scrap fabric to cover your container but it is a good idea to paint or cover your container if you don't have a whole super ton of sticks and moss now usually I do go out and um, collect fresh sticks for my DIY faux home bird's nest um, but it was pretty chilly today I'm telling you taking Benji Bear out for a walk I think our high today was maybe 18 degrees so taking him out for a walk was about all I could handle picking up sticks was just not on the list for me today so I'm just using this little grass and this is from Dollar Tree 
You guys can find so many different little grassy ideas um, in their crafting section and also go to your um, regular craft stores and even Walmart will carry like some little Easter grass or whatnot. Um, and so just, you know, grab some grass, some twigs, whatever you guys have on hand and get to work. I'm gently hot gluing it. And I say gently because you don't want to burn your fingertips. Although I do have neuropathy in my hands. So it kind of makes it, you know, a little bit easier to do. I don't feel um, the heat from the glue as much. Now it's not so bad that I would actually be burning my hands, but I will tell you my hands are pretty desensitized. Um, also probably due to the amount of crafting I do. Now I'm adding a little bit of Celsius moss to the top of this and again just adding the glue, kind of giving it a second and then barely gently pressing it down onto there. I know that when our birds make nests here, um, they use all different kinds of goodies from the yard. So I really feel like you can mix stuff in. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, Dollar Tree is also carrying these little bags of moss and they have like little mixed, you know, just greenery and pine cones and just little mossy goodies in there. So I thought that to make it look a little bit more realistic, I would add that to the center and then add a little bit more of the kind of straw moss to that. I also love the Dollar Tree speckled eggs. I think those are super fun. So hey, pop those into your little faux DIY bird's nest and bam, you guys don't have to buy these at the store. You can um, create them for just a couple of dollars in whatever recycled container you have on hand. Add them in to your Easter decor. And I will tell you the fireplace that you guys see back there is completely fake. Um, so don't be worried. I do have like, you know, some little greenery in front of that. I do plan to move that up on top of my mantle, but I just did this display for this video. Um, so anyway, I didn't want you guys to think that that was a real fireplace um it is fake but anyway here is how my little bird's nest looks popped in it to my little easter decor which again is going to be moved up soon and there's benji bear he cannot resist getting in on mom's video for this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how to make a cozy little Easter cross using just a Dollar Tree cross. I found this at my Dollar Tree last year. They should be putting them out this year if they don't already have them in your stores. And then I'm just going to use some of this soft yarn. Dollar Tree is also carrying yarn. I found mine in my crafting section. So just add some hot glue to the base of your cross and begin to just wrap it around your cross. And you can get like a pretty good bit of wrapping done. And and then you might want to add a little bit more hot glue just so the um, yarn doesn't um, slide around and you might want to pop on some fun praise and worship music or maybe even a great little show and then that's just going to give you guys something to do while you wrap because there's a lot of wrapping to do here um, but once you get through it it's a little bit tedious but once you get through it oh a podcast is fun as well um, then once you get through that you guys are going to have a really cozy little sweet easter cross you could even have your kiddos help you if they can, you know, wrap carefully. And each time you wrap on that little space of yarn, you just want to wrap directly next to it. The ends are a little bit tricky because you do kind of have to hot glue those ends um, pretty closely, but you can just wrap some extra little yarn around that. And so the way that I did the center part, which is a little bit tricky, I do find, um, I just start with one of the arms and I move it into the center and then I'll cross it over. And then I just kind of have to go back and forth with the remaining bit of yarn. So you can see here, I crossed it over and then I just kind of went back and forth. And again, this was the part that kind of did burn my fingertips. Hey, but you guys can get um, some little um, thumb or fingertip covers, or you can use a spatula, which is really great as well the hot glue does not stick to like a little cooking spatula so that's a fun idea now I love totally dazzled bling and this is a totally dazzled bling jewel I love Natalie she is such a sweet sweet sweetheart she is the owner of totally dazzled and I'll leave you guys a link in the description box of this video but go check her out she has really nice inexpensive jewels I used to have an Etsy shop and I would make really fancy Victorian home decor for some high-end clients. And so I like to use a lot of jewels and let me tell you, they were expensive and Natalie's are so inexpensive if you like to craft and decorate. And these also actually come on a brooch. So there's already a pin fastened to it. Um, so, you know, depending on what kind of crafting you're doing, you can leave the pin or a lot of times too, I'll just take it off. So here's how it looks. My sweet little Easter cross. Um, I think it's just a sweet little sentiment. Now this is just, to show for the video. This is going to be moved up on top of my mantle. And again, those are fake fire logs right there. There's no fire there. Um, so anyway, you guys, I just thought you guys would enjoy this. And it's a fun idea for a fun little Easter cross on a budget. You guys could also add a little bow to your cross if you wanted.
Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree birdhouses and these are going to be in the crafter's square section at your local Dollar Tree and they come with just a raw wood. And a couple of days ago I painted this white, um, so I just chalk painted it white. I believe it was one color, one, one coat. Um, and so now I'm just going to take some of this little apple barrel craft paint. I got this at Walmart and I'm just going to add a green roof. And I apologize if you guys can hear Benji Bear in the backyard barking. He, his girlfriend, Shushilulu, is back there and so he is really causing quite a commotion um, but anyway I'm just gonna paint the little top part of my birdhouse green now you guys can do any color you want I think it would even be really cute to make a Mackenzie Child inspired birdhouse um, with like some maybe some little checks or stripes or just something like that I thought that would be really cute and so again I'm just adding some little green tips also to the base of this but really get creative let me tell you, I think that this would be such a fun and amazing little craft to do with your kiddos or your grandkids. And um, just get creative, you guys. Uh, pour some paint and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, the next idea I had was to take this piece of scrap wood and then just paint it green and then add that to the base so it kind of looks like it's standing up, you know, like on a little stand, like a little birdhouse would look. And my idea is to even add like a little plate around it and add in some fun little moss and some eggs and some goodies like that. So here's my little plastic plate I hot glued my birdhouse onto and then I'm adding in just some little leaves here and then I decided to add in some of this decorative moss in and around the base to kind of make it feel I guess like it's like a little fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods might as well. <laughs> Don't we all need a good fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods? In fact, that would be kind of something fun to have, like an oversized birdhouse. Um, maybe I'll do something like that this year. And so now I'm just going to add some little eggs in and around the base of my little fairy garden birdhouse. And there it is nestled with my sweet little bunny. And there's Benji Bear scooting around in the background. He is such a little stinker, you guys. Every time I get into crafting and decorating, he always has to be right next to me, but he wants to say hi to you guys and then there's that sweet little bunny that sweet little bunny came from Tuesday morning I love how she has her beautiful little crown on so fun and fabulous on a budget This next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree family sign and I'm just going to chalk paint it white. I love this sign. My sweet friend Stacy sent me this one and then a gather sign, which I'm probably going to save until next season, until the fall time. Um, but I'm just going to take some white chalk paint and I'm going to chalk paint the family part, the little lettering on the front and then also in and around the sides. You know, family is such my heart. And I do think it was really cute as is. But I'm going to be doing kind of more of like a French country, like really washed out look with my home decor for some of my Easter goodies. I like to do like a lot of pastels and whatnot, but you guys can always paint this to suit your home decor. But here's how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Um, I think it's perfect for Easter. It goes perfectly with my Easter decor right here. So as always, you guys, I ask that you um, comment down below and let me know what your favorite DIY is in this video and which one will you, be, will you be recreating. I know Benji Bear had a big hand in all of these DIYs today. He was the creative director and I can tell you what, he was the best ever. So here he's got these little balls. He gets a bark box every month um, that um, I signed him up for. I just thought he would love that. So they send him um, toys for small animals. So here's his little toy box right here and he was fussing at me. He really wanted me to get his toy box down. Um, I had moved it out of the way just kind of to make the video look more decory. He's looking for his ball. Look at him push all those toys out of the way to find his special yellow ball. So shout out to Benji Bear and all the puppies who love him that watch my videos. We love y'all and we're so thankful and blessed to have you here. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home and I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. Listen, I truly believe that y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. And for everybody that has been part of the Romantic Home family here, thank you guys so much for being here. You all make my heart totally sparkle and shine and are such a blessing to me. Now remember, 
you guys can be a blessing to others by always leaving kind comments on people's posts, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you guys are on, the social media platform, you all have power in your voice. Use your voice for good and leave kindness wherever you go. I guarantee you that that kind footprint will come back to you. So also, I just want to encourage you guys to keep up the good work in your crafting and decorating journey. I feel like crafting is so good for your heart and soul and no matter where you're at, keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, sometimes I'll have an idea in my head on a craft that I want to make and it will come out completely different or I'll completely ruin it. But um, I've learned always so much. And when I just keep trying, um, it usually improves just a little bit at a time or I'll discover a new craft or a decorating idea that I love that I can kind of get really excited and into for a while. So I feel like homemaking is such a special thing to do. It makes everybody just feel a little bit happier when the home is smelling good and tidy and beautifully decorated. Um, I think we need that nice oasis to come home to, especially with everything that's been going on in this world. Um, in the last couple of years, I know nobody has gone unscathed or not had some type of trauma or something happen in the last couple of years due to just everything going on. So anyway, I just want to encourage you guys in your life journey and to keep up the good work. So I will let you guys get back to your day. I love y'all to the moon and back. We are on spring break this week currently. And so I'm going to continue to post on my regular schedule, but we're going to do some compilation videos and just some fun things like that. And then next week I'll be back in the studio. I do want to spend time with my friends and family as well. So I love y'all. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. And until our next video, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. We'll talk to you guys very soon. Mm, goodbye. I love you.